Mike Clendenin will kick the ball off. Across the way, Morskell watches the ball go into the end zone. And it has already been waved yet, even though no one is covering it, and it'll come out to the 20 yard line. The officials were given uh, Texas a little assist there. I thought it, so too. <laughs> that's a free kick unless it goes out over the end line. That's right. They waved it dead as it went into the end zone. But Carl Robinson, the fullback, has been suspended. What does that do to a team to find out in the morning of a big game of the Southwest Conference that their starting fullback has been suspended? Well, it uh, really shakes you up a little bit, particularly the boys that were very close friends. But I'm sure the Lakers did not do it unless it was a very sufficient reason. That is the tailback. And Weedy Harris, number 51, makes the stop. We talked to him about what a great defensive uh, team Texas is. However, Houston is number two in every defensive category in the Southwest Conference. So Houston is a very capable defensive ball club. Second down and six to go from the 24. Texas sputtering this year on offense. Very tough on defense. Again, the tailback. And again, Jan Jones carries. And Jones is out from the 30-yard line, but the market is the 29. Weedy Harris and Donnie Love made the stop. And that'll mean it'll be third down and about a half a yard to go. A.J. Jam Jones out of Youngstown, Ohio. Very injury-prone. Rodney Tate with a big 52-yard run last week is hurt enough playing this week. And we can see number 51, Weedy Harris. He's 6'2", 220-pound junior, moving in to make the tackle. Very tough to stop the eye formation with good lead blocking and all of that time did an excellent job. Donnie Little goes wide left, two tight ends in on the short yard situation. Again, Jones hit in the backfield by Craig McGadion, the nose guard. Along with number 40, Grady Turner, and it's fourth down. They took the big gamble, lined up in the goal line defense. The deepest man in their secondary was only about three yards behind the line of scrimmage. They shoot every back uh, through the line, the linebackers, and you can see McGallion making the stop about two yards behind the line of scrimmage. John Goodson, the barefooted kicker, inconsistent a year ago, will kick the ball away to Lamal Fee, who is an outstanding returner, third of the NCAA last year. Goodson hangs this high, come down at about the 30-yard line, where Fee takes it on a fair catch. And Houston will have the football first time. Oh, what a time Houston had. They stopped him on third down and a half a yard to go. And now the Houston offense, which will have, as we take first of all, that is the Houston defense there, so we won't tell you about that again. We'll tell you that the Houston offense is Lionel Wilson, the quarterback, Robert Durham, and Dave Barrett, the running back. David Roberson, one wide receiver, and Lamel T, the other. First down is that fear formation that puts the ball on the ground a lot. Wilson hangs on to the football, pitches down low, and coming out is David Barrett. And Barrett gets across the 30-yard line, and is tackled there by Mike Hatchett. Along with Doug Schenkel, Ranson, Marshall, Kidd, Grimes, Pfeiffer, and Ford, and Ford's having an outstanding year, will be the offensive line that tries to move out that Texas defense, which, is, as we said, is number one in the nation against the rush. Second down and seven, no score in the first minute and 15 seconds. Lionel Wilson, the third string quarterback, pressed into the starting role with injuries, and apparently he's already confused. Well, they had a back, uh, Jim, that had his shoe off, and they were trying to get it uh, put back together again. Uh, taking too much time to do it, they wisely had to take the timeout. Should have been an equipment timeout, though. And I might know Bill Yeoman, he's over there, and I'm not being facetious, but saying, goodness gracious, what happened here? As Lionel Wilson pulls over. Defense of Texas, Holly, Sim, oh my, Kenneth Sim. Bud has talked a lot about him. He is 6'6", 265, can do it all. Mark Weber and Kiki Diallo. That's the forward four of Texas. Now the linebackers are three of them. Bruce Schultz, who is 6'6", 233, and Bill Yeoman of Houston says he can run with a flanker. Doug Shankle is in the middle, and Jeff Lighting, who had five sacks last week against Texas Tech, is the weak side linebacker. Then in the secondary, Bedford, Johnson, Graham, and I love the name, Mike Hatches. Now, Bobby Johnson is the younger brother of an All-American, Johnny Johnson, who played at Texas, and Mike Hatchett's older, younger brother, I should say older brother, Derek Hatchett, also played at Texas and also is in the pros now. And this is a good close personal friend of Bud, or was, and that is Bill Yeoman. Bill feels that they must make the inside handoff option go 
to keep Shankill at home and keep Sims and Weber at home. If they can do that, he believes that'll help their attack. Second down seven. Ronell C is wide to the left. Wilson pitches back out, and there's his running back, Durham. Durham gets across the 35-yard line, and I believe he's got the first down. Vance Bedford, number 41, ran him out of bounds as Houston tests that tough Texas defense. And they were in an unbalanced line, which gave them a little bit of extra running room to the outside and an extra blocker out there. You can see how Wilson held the ball till the very last moment before he popped it out to Durham, and it's first down for the Cougars. On the 39-yard line. And now Leon Felder comes wide to the left as a wide receiver. Senior out of Fort Worth. First down, Wilson. Hands off, and that is David Barrett, his fullback. They call him the big back, and he picked up three or four more. And that was that inside handoff that uh, Bill Fields, they've got to establish to keep Shankle and Sims at home. How to keep them at home is right, because when you got Ken and Sims as one of your tackles, and Schultz and Shankle, that is something. First quarter, we've got over 12 minutes to go. We've just begun this of uh, what Coach Fred Akers calls the most important Southwest Conference game of the year. Second down seven again. Well, wow. Mark Weber riding down Robert Durham, the tailback. And it's third down and long. It looked as though they were putting the blitz on. As you can see, the linebackers shooting the gaps as the linemen themselves go through the gaps. Mark Weber making a great play. And, of course, Sims is at the bottom of the pile, number 77. In comes Craig Curry as the fifth defensive back. On third down seven from the 43. Wide receivers to both sides. Wilson's yet to throw. Running the football this time. Will not get the first down. Down he goes across the 46-yard line. Bobby Johnson came up. Number 28 just getting up in your picture now. And now they'll call on Lonnie Schultz, a fine freshman putter out of Weatherford, Texas, to kick the ball back to the Longhorn. The first down they made, Jim, uh, can be very beneficial to them because if we get a reasonable kick here, Texas will be backed up at poor field position. Lonnie Stokes, a freshman, kicking to Rob Morshell, a freshman. Rush is not on. Good kick. Morshell will watch it. Well, he watches it go out of bounds inside the five-yard line at the four. The Longhorns have terrible field position. Big game. Little of choose thus far. Is this a 49-yard punt, no return. The ball goes out on the four-yard line, and here comes Texas, sending Donnie Little wide to the right. The Longhorns backed up. There's the tailback, and look out, Dan Jones. Picks up a first down out near the 20-yard line. Reggie Varner and Calvin Eason, the cornerback and free safety, stopped him, but what a quick opener for Jones. And beautiful blocking here. You can see the line blocking. The great blocking by the pulling guard, and Jan Jones is turning down right before the goal line. 15-yard pickup, first down at the 19-yard line. Little wide to the right. McIver has not gone yet, nor has Wilson. That's the crowd, the Astrodome. Tail back again, and Jones is stopped for maybe a yard, and that is all. It appeared that... Uh, McIver checked signals on that play, but uh, if he did, he certainly didn't pick up any weakness in the Houston defense. Greg McGowdian and Terry Monroe moved in. There's some big folks playing this game these days, bud. Monroe is 261, McGowdian is 251, and they combine for the stop. And Callaway, the other defensive tackle, is 260. A big, aggressive Houston defense. Second down, eight to go from the 21-yard line. Texas lost only one in the Southwest Conference with Jan Jones. Jones gets near the 24-yard line, and Butch LaCroix made the stop there. It'll be third down and five. The two linebackers, uh, Harris, number 51, and Turner, 40, are excellent pursuit men for the University of Houston, and as you can see, they're moving across to be in on the play. Great pursuit. By the way, you saw number 48. That is Donnie Love. I know he normally wears 35, but something is happened to his jersey, and he's 48 tonight. Third and five for the Longhorn. There's the guider looking to throw, and it's picked up. Picked up by LaCroix. Big break, first break of the game goes to Houston. The seventh interception for Butch LaCroix, the junior out of Tyler, Texas. And for McGarver, that is the eighth time he has been intercepted. 
But McIver doesn't have much authority on this ball. He can see the counter fake. He's rolling out with the ball, and he tries to just kind of drop it over there, but the ball is in the air so long that McGuire is able to move back in, make the interception, did a good job of waiting for the blockers to form for him, moved the ball down to the 22-yard line. They send Roberson to the right, Dean to the left, Wilson with the football, and Wilson is thrown for off, back to the 25. Getting up is Weber, and you can see Bruce Schultz. He's the senior out of Austin with great speed. 6'6", 233 that we talked about. A loss on the play. It is second down and 12 to go. Eight minutes, 40 seconds to go at the first quarter. Houston has not thrown a pass as yet. They will be ready too shortly. Leon Felder is the man wide to the right. Wilson back to throw. Has his man out there about his feet. Across the 10, B down near the 5, 6 yard line. First and goal to go to Cougars. Van Stetford makes the stop. Great play action this time. Wilson starts back, makes a good fake, turns, and then throws on the run. Crossing pattern by Fee, who can really fly. Watch him turn up field here. A little bit of a juke. Thought that perhaps for a moment he could break it into the end zone, but Bedford made a very fine tackle. Well, Lanell, that is his 28th catch of the year to lead the club, but he's yet to score a touchdown. Almost had one then. Houston looking to draw first blood. Wilson hands straight ahead to David Barrett, who gets perhaps inside the five. Second down and goal to go from the four. A little bit of a counter action there to try to get the fast pursuit. We take a look in the middle of the screen at number 77, Sims, and watch how he reacted to the play. He just is so much bigger and stronger than his opponent, Grimes. He simply stood him up and forced the blocker back into the ball carrier. Second down from the four-yard line. Felder wide left. Bringing up Mike Hatchett with him. Wilson turns the corner. Touchdown! The throw to feed. The four-yard run by Wilson. And the Cougars lead 6-0. They really did a great job of faking here. You can see the first inside fake. The Longhorns went for the inside fake. Wilson found the slot opening, and he had the option man to the outside who he still could have pitched the ball to. By Clendenin, the freshman, who had four straight field goals a week ago, Hasn't missed a conversion all year. We'll try to get this one. And does. And there it is. The underdog Houston Cougars lead the Longhorns of Texas to the race to the Cotton Bowl, at least in this game. 7 to nothing. A 22-yard drive after the interception by Lacar with Wilson taking it in. Again, Texas took the big gamble uh, defensively, thinking it would be a straight-ahead handoff. You can see the defense close and reverse pivot there by Wilson. Also tends to cut down the pursuit. Wilson turns it upfield. The pitch man is still to the outside, but he's got such a big lane that he takes it into the end zone, almost untouched. And now again, Clendenin to kick it off. Rob Morshell is a the man they would like to have the ball returned by. Number eight. Interception. Again, in the Southwest Conference, SMU, which defeated Rice today, 5-1, and one, but not eligible for the Cotton Bowl. Texas, 3-1. Houston, whom they're playing tonight, 3-2. and two. Baylor, who plays Arkansas tonight, and you'll see that on ESPN, also 3-2. and two. Johnny Little comes out wide to the right. And Jones hits the line of scrimmage, breaking a tackle out near the 30-yard line. Jones running very well tonight. Donnie Love, the senior out of Garden, Texas, tripped him up. He's a strong safety. There's A.J. Jam Jones. 
He did a great job there. The tackle should have been made at the line of scrimmage, and he almost broke it into the clear for a touchdown. A week ago against Texas Tech, he had only 20 yards total. He's done better than that already tonight. Second down, four to go. Or has not carried the ball yet. Here's Jones. Jones has got the first down across the 40-yard line. Dan Jones, first down, Texas, and for the Longhorns, their best field position of the night. Leo Trust, number 49, Calvin Eaton, 38, made the stop. When the ball carrier runs by the first tackler, uh, you've got a great play. Jones moves past the first tackler there, who should have made the play and picked up the first down. And let's also credit in on the stop, McQuarrie. McIver, McIver throwing to Donnie Little and overthrows him. And Rick McIver, the junior out of Fort Stockton, Texas, has thrown twice tonight, once intercepted, and that was nowhere near Donnie Little, who had a step on the defensive man. Hard to throw the ball going to the left, but all he needed to do was just put it on the numbers that time. So it is second down and 10. 6.21 to go in the first quarter in the Astrodome in Houston. Yes, it is a sellout. Yes, it is a game that involves two fine teams from the state of Texas for the right perhaps if they go on routinely through the rest of the season as they're expected to do after tonight the right to go to the Cotton Bowl AJ Jam Jones oh what a fine tackle at the line of scrimmage and that was made by Leo Truss the reserve end on the right side of Lincoln Alabama number 49 does a good job of keeping the shoulders square upfield and the handoff from Fiverr and the beautiful tackle Ball is on the 43-yard line. Third down and nine. The guy who may have to throw a third pass of the night. Seven-nothing Houston. The guy who throws for a little and throws it past him. And again, the guy who was well out in front of LaFleur. Little has twice been open once on a down and out to the left, then on a down and out to the right, and each time the guy who missed it. They had the blitz on that time, but uh, McIver does not pressure to... The lineman in the back did a good job of protecting him. He simply overthrew the ball. Don Goodson, the senior barefooted kicker from right here in Houston, Texas, will kick the ball away from Lanell Fee of Houston, who, as we said, was third in the NCAA last year, returning punts. And that's not a great kick, but it may get a job well done because it's going to take a hop if they can keep it out, and they do. That's one of those kicks that doesn't look too good, but turns out to be outstanding. And now the Cougars have bad field position. A 55-yard kick. Next weekend on ESPN, Notre Dame at the Air Force. Notre Dame, big winner today over Georgia Tech. Got to get on the winning track to close out the season. Another game, Michigan at Purdue. Purdue bumped by Iowa today, but Michigan down 21-7, scored 70 points in winning their ball game against Illinois. And Bud and I, Oklahoma, Missouri. That's where we'll be next weekend. And didn't Oklahoma and Missouri each have a scare today, but each won their ball game. Houston had uh, four men back, three men ready to block on the play and then the safety. He should have been able to catch the ball in the air without any men back. And one of the things you hate to do on uh, any kind of a trick situation is let the ball hit the ground. Ball hit the ground, and it was a very quick kick, kind of low, wobbly kick, and it hit but at least at about the 25 and went downfield 20 yards to the five-yard line where the Cougars will try to run it out. They lead 7 nothing. When you're playing on artificial surface, which obviously you are here in the Astrodome, uh, the kicks usually do bounce forward. On grass, uh, a little bit of a more resilient uh, surface, and you're not so sure which way the ball's going to bounce. Here come the Cougars, led by their sophomore quarterback, Lionel Wilson. Fans are getting to their feet. And down goes Robert Durham, the tailback, after maybe a yard gain, and that is all. But the fans are getting to their feet on first down from the five. Again, we take a look at Sims, and he just kind of wades through everybody. Nobody touches him. He's so strong. It appears that nobody's touching him. He's just shaking off the blockers as he makes the tackle. Second down and nine. Fred Akers hopes to get to the Cotton Bowl. He's One here is Wilson. He's going to throw. And throw gets the ball away and gets out across the 10 yard line. It'll be third down, about four to go. Got great athletic ability. He's a big man, 6'1, 206. He's got the ability to be a running.
running back. And of course, if you're playing the triple option, you do need a running back or quarterback. You know, that is something that Bill Yeoman does quite frequently. Believe it or not, and that is throw from his own end zone. It takes a little intestinal fortitude to do that. And also, now Texas is walking backwards, and they're talking to Lionel Wilson. And obviously, there's going to be a penalty, bud. I did not see a flag, but obviously there was one thrown. 4:55 to go, first quarter, seven nothing. They're going to step it off. Joe Thomas. Tells us that Texas was holding. Pass play called. Let's see if we can pick up somebody in the secondary that uh, did the defensive holding. See Wilson rolling. Pressured. Look at the great speed he's got as he moves. Breaks past another Texas man. It's knocked out of bounds, but whoever it was downfield, we did not have it on the camera. Big break for Houston. Rovers into the right. C to the left. And Wilson hands off. No, he does not. Looked like he was going to hand off to Durham, didn't it? He put the ball out, brought it back, and Diola put him down, number 31. Kiki, a junior out of Houston, but goes to Austin and the University of Texas. Second down and 10. No gain on the play. Most of the time when uh, you have a bootleg, which that play was, faking it to a back and the quarterback keeping it, there's an option to throw the ball. That was a pure bootleg run all the way. Roberson and Felder all the way bringing in plays from Bill Yeoman, the coach of Houston. It is Felder that's in there now. Straight ahead goes David Barrett, the senior out of Corpus Christi, the fullback, and Barrett got little or nothing, and that Texas defense is looking awfully good. This time led by Eric Holly, a junior out of Austin, number 93. Their that statistics are amazing defensively, Jim. They've given up only 90.6 yards per game rushing, and as we mentioned in the top show, they're leading the country in total defense, giving up only 214.6 yards a game. Lyndon, Wilkinson, Roland, Sharp, and Pfeiffer are now the forward wall for Houston as Yeoman is doing some substituting. On third down 10, Wilson gets the ball away, has to be there. First down up to the 36-yard line, ridden down by Curry. And there's a face mask penalty coming up. Curry, the fifth man on the nickel defense of Texas, rode him down, and apparently there's a face mask call. And Texas is daring them to throw the ball. The deepest man in the secondary is only about five yards from the line of scrimmage. Fee makes the fake. Apparently Wilson makes the fake. Throws to Fee breaking across the middle and you can see the face mask all the way there as he has gone down. So we get the penalty as they move forward. That time they did a reasonable job of blocking Sims. He was able to force the play but not quickly enough to put any real pressure on Wilson before he threw the football. Ball is taken out to midfield. First down 10. Two big penalties against Texas and Longhorns trail in this ball game. Seven to nothing. D wide to the left. Wilson, exciting man. But he loses something there. He is a sophomore, remember, and as Bill Yeoman said, had we known he was going to be our starter, we would have worked with him a lot more. But injury has made Lionel Wilson the starter. He threw the touchdown pass last week. As we watch the Texas defense in the last play, you can see the number of men that they've got forcing each one of the triple options off the veer. It's going to be very difficult for Houston to run the football. They're going to have to throw the ball quite often in order to move it. A little bit less than three minutes to go. First quarter. Now the ball is handed off across midfield. Goes David Barrett. But it's going to be third down and about nine to go. And by the way, I just noticed as we take a look at Felder and Yeoman, that Bevo is white. And I don't remember a white Bevo, the mascot of Texas before. Well, it's a new Bevo, and he's got some of those brown spots, uh, Texas orange spots. Third down and nine to go. A four-yard run by Wilson after LaCroix intercepted McIver with 7.21 to go in this quarter has led to the only score. And here's Wilson putting it out. Flag is down, and the ball is dragged away. From number 43, Robert Durham. But a flag went down quickly in the backfield as the rush was on. And Texas, I think, was offside. That's what it is. Another mistake by the Longhorns. Three penalties on this drive. That really helps the offense keep the ball, and it drives coaches crazy. Well, they had defensive holding. They had a face mask, and now they're offside. They still got a tough third down situation, though, against a defense as solid as Texas. 
In comes Jeff Lighting. Out comes Craig Curry, the fifth back. So Texas has a 4-3 in there. Thinking that Houston will run this time. And the ball pitched back to Durham. Durham's got the first down across the 40-yard line. Knocked out of bounds across the way by Holly, number 93. This is perfect execution of the Veer triple option. There's the inside fake. To freeze the defense, could see the man being tackled. Wilson was forced to pitch the ball. Got it right on target to Durham. Let's take a look out at the end zone. There's the inside handoff. You can see the tackles that are made on the halfback as he hit in, and then the pitch to the outside, and Durham picking up the first down. Ball on the 38-yard line of Texas. Two minutes, eight seconds to go. First quarter. Here's Wilson keeping the ball. Flag down again. As Wilson moves to the 36-yard line, and that is about all. Sims in on the tackle there, along with Diola, and this may be against Houston. The flag went down immediately. And where it went down, Jim, it's almost always a holding penalty. Yeah, and that's what it's going to be. Umpire drops the ball and flag that quickly. You know you're in trouble offensively. Right. So after three straight penalties to Texas, now the Cougars draw one. See if we can see who is guilty of the infraction. And the quick result was Grimes moving to the outside, trying to contain Sims. And nobody did contain Sims very well, but uh, they did try to get a little bit of an arm around him. They seldom do, a consensus All-American. 66265. There will be a professional ball game played in this Astrodome on Sunday afternoon. And some of those involved are taking a look at some of these playing here tonight. What do they have in mind? The draft next May. First down and 20 to go. They move the ball back to the 47 yard line of Texas with 159 left first quarter. 14 of the 12 starters, or 22 starters, pardon me, from the University of Texas are seniors, and many of them are excellent. Pro prospects. First time we've had two wide receivers to the same side. Wilson back. Wilson looking. Has it man Roberson. Roberson hit immediately at the 42 yard line. You can see Lighting there, but Lighting is not the man that made the hit. The man who made the hit was Foxy Kane, number three. Check that. That's Mike Hatchett, number two, the right cornerback. So second down and 14 to go from the 42 yard line. Wilson. And has thrown the ball very well, Jim, thus far. He's uh, three for three on that one that was incomplete when we had the penalty, but uh, he's hitting 50% of his passes so far this season. 63 of 126 going into this game. Texas in the nickel defense. Here comes Wilson. Everybody dropping back to the pass. He's going to run. He's got the first down, 25 yard line. The whole Texas secondary just dropped back to pass, and Wilson ran the ball to the 25. And Durham threw a beautiful block to get him down to the 25. It's uh, one of the favorite plays in football, the option to pass or run. And when you have a quarterback like Wilson and the Texas defense falls off as they do, there's plenty of daylight for him to turn upfield, and he made up his mind immediately that it was a running play. Didn't waste any time looking for open receivers. At this moment, the Cougars are taking the long arm. It could change, but that's what's going on now. Quick hitter to Alan Polk, who carries the ball for the first time from Huntsville, Texas. A senior number 32 in a fullback, and John Haynes, a backup tackle, a sophomore to Fort Worth for Texas, made the stop. Even though you don't make much on those quick inside the handoffs, the, they do remind the defense that you might run it in there, and that does have a tendency to keep them at home. Second down nine, Felder to the right and Fee to the left. Time running out, and this is the first quarter, and Wilson goes down. And we'll come back in just a moment. With Bud Wilkinson on Jim Simpson, and as we went away, the clock wound down at the end of the first quarter. Where it is seven to nothing. A reminder that on Thursday at nine o'clock Eastern, six p.m. Pacific time, live we'll have top-ranked boxing from the Meadowlands, and the big boxing show that 22,000 seat Burn Meadowlands Arena will feature Bobby Shez and Elisha Obed, and that'll be something to see. Obed has got 58 knockouts in his career. That is live here on ESPN. Ball is on the 25 of Texas. It is third down and 11 Houston. And the Cougars lead the long one 7 nothing as we begin the second quarter. Wilson hands the hands of Barrett. And Barrett, I don't know if he lost the football or not. The fans seem to think so. Kenneth Sims, number 77, will be getting up. And there he is. What an All-American he is. You feel sometimes something that's all over the field like Sims, if you run right at him, He's so anxious to pursue that you can knock him out of there, but uh, Sims is truly as good as everyone says. Let's watch number 77 as he closes here on the right side of your screen. 
and there's just no daylight. The ball popped out, but apparently they was recovered by Texas, so they ruled that uh, he had been stopped, his forward progress stopped before he fumbled. Four straight field goals, Mike Clendenin kicked last week, and from 42 yards out, Clendenin tries to add three more points, and does not. 42-yard field goal is wide. And so Texas holds on, but the Cougars are leading with only 16 seconds gone. In the second quarter, it's seven to nothing. Houston take over on the 25-yard line. That was the line of scrimmage, and they hand the ball off to Jan Jones, and Jan Jones gets across the 30-yard line before Grady Turner, the good strong side linebacker, the senior out of Tyler, number 40, made the stop. There's A.J. Jan Jones. Houston did a great job of ball control in the first quarter, Jim. He had the ball nine minutes and 48 seconds against five minutes and 12 seconds for Texas. The fans from both schools are playing. Predominantly because it's just below us, the Texas fan and the eyes of Texas are upon you. Second down and three. And again, Jan Jones, and this time Jan Jones is jammed up. May have got the yard. It'll be third down and short. Look like Dwayne Calloway, number 25, the big sophomore, 260-pound tackle, made the stop, along with a strong safety, Donnie Love. Ball at the 33, they've got a nudge it across the 35 for the first down for Texas. Houston will be in all of the gaps this time, trying to prevent the short yardage play, picking up the first down, and play action pass could be open. They brought in a fifth down lineman. That is Donnie Little in motion. Dan Jones trying to get outside. He is going to get outside, and I think he's got the first down. Someone lost the helmet, but I think Jones got the first down, crossing a 35-yard line. And I would want to tell you something. The Cougar defense covered up nicely there. They showed some speed. There's Harrison turn of the two linebackers. It's just a quick toss-out sweep, and you can see how well they move, how well they avoid the blockers as they close. That was LaQuire coming up also. They really did deliver a blow. But it appears that they just barely did make the first down. They've got it, bud. 7-0 Houston. 12.59 to go. Second quarter. A.J. Jan Jones is the only one, as you have just read, that has gained a single yard for Texas. The Texas fullback hasn't carried yet. McIver hasn't carried yet. He's thrown three times, twice incomplete, and once intercepted. Jones has carried for 56 yards. That is the Texas offense thus far. First down, there goes the tailback Jones again for yard or two. And that is about all. Grady Turner is up top, number 40. And Jones was lying with that football right in his stomach and two or three people lying on top of him. Very hard to uh, control your charge. He's hit here, he's stopped. And then as he twists and turns, he gets a host of red shirts on him. They drive him back and it's little can't tell who is doing most of the pushing. It's just one of those plays that happen in the football game. John Walker, the sophomore of Killeen, Texas, takes over as tailback. And so maybe for the first time, we'll see someone else, besides A.J. Jan Jones, carry the football for Texas. As Jones goes out, he did have that football in his stomach. He has been running it a lot, and Texas has called a timeout. And we'll come back to the Astrodome in Houston in just a moment. Bobbing from the end zone. Houston out in front by the score of 7 0. And a reminder about professional football from Canada. They're winding down up there for the Great Cup. And the East and West Division Finals are coming up on Sunday the 15th. That is next week. The Eastern Division Finals will be seen live at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific time. And then we'll switch to the Western Division Finals. Four Eastern, one Pacific time here on ESPN. Second down and eight for Texas. And here's McIver rolling out this way. Looking to throw. Now he's going to run and gets out of bounds. Crossing the 40-yard line near the 43 with Leo Truss in pursuit. Truss has four sacks already. And that's the first time that McIver has run the football tonight. The tight end, as you can see right in the middle of your screen, number 87, Stapleton, is moving to the outside. McIver was forced to run. It was a little play-action pass. He was... Pretty well open, although you can see the defender back there who would have moved when the ball was in the air. McIver did pick up about five yards on the play. McIver throws the football for Donnie Little and misses him again. And out comes John Goodson to kick it away. 
I bet you Donnie Little has said, hey, I'm going down and out all night long, and he hadn't hit me yet. I think this is the third time that he's been wide open. Again, the pass by McIver is just overthrown. McIver throwing it on the run and not doing a very good job. B drops back. Goodson to kick the football. Standing inside his own 30-yard line. McIver 0 for 4, and he's had one interception. Kicking away from C, but he gets over there at the 10-yard line, looking for some running room, has none, and gets up to about the 14. That will be first and 10 for the Cougars of Houston, who time on the clockwise have absolutely dominated this football game. Texas has not been able to move, and Texas helped Cougars move, although they did not score, with three penalties in one play. 43 yards, that punt, and that includes the return. So good for it was inconsistent last year, having a good night tonight. Bill Yeoman, 20th year, Houston, looking on. Funny thing, the thing that's hurt him most tonight is A.J. Jam Jones. Bill Yeoman's wife is named A.J. Here comes Wilson, dragged down, flips the ball out at the last moment to Durham. And Durham gets across the 15 to the 16-yard line. Run out of bounds by Doug Shanko. This is why uh, you call the Veer or any triple option a high-risk offense. He's almost dragged down here and decides to toss the ball off, and he makes the perfect pitch that time. And Durham still didn't have any daylight to run as the pattern of the Texas defense had every option covered. Second down to nine, and the long ones have been a little bit more difficult lately in terms of allowing Houston to pick up big yardage. Wilson, down he goes. This time he didn't get back to the line of scrimmage at all. And it's a clearly beyond a question of which team can throw the football better. The, both teams are going to be so tough against the rush that unless it's unusual play that happens to break, uh, they're not going to move it running the ball. You've got to throw it. Texas using some of its reserve defensive men. Mike Buchanan, a junior out of St. Louis, Missouri, made that stop. Clock continuing to run, 10.40 to go. First half, third down 10. Houston up by seven on a four-yard run by Lionel Wilson who now faces this third down and 10 situation from his own 15. He better hurry. <laughs> Gets the ball away, rolling out. Has a man downfield, but he's going to run with the football, and it's not going to be enough. Fee actually had to slow up. He had his man beaten so far, he was going to come back to the ball when he saw Wilson running. But Tranko put Wilson down, and now Houston has to kick the ball away. Ronnie Soap comes in to kick it away, and Rob Morshell stands inside his own 40-yard line. Had Wilson been running to his right, I believe he could have gotten rid of the ball. But going to your left, he's got to get faced up field before he can throw. Go standing on his own six-yard line. Gets a good snap. Gets the ball away. It's going to hit short and bounce sideways, not forward. The ball will be on the 20, 47-yard line. First and 10 at the long run. What a night in the afternoon. That's far as Houston's night. They lead 7-0 with a lot of time left. Well, the initial signal by Joe Thomas was a personal foul against Houston. But Texas was walking back, and Thomas is just, as we all have the right to do now and then, reverse ourselves and say, no, it is against Texas. And once again, the long ones come up with a big penalty. They have the ball, or had it, at the 48-yard line. But as a result of the personal foul, it's going to move it back inside the 35 and down to the 33-yard line. Instead of having great field position, it's marginal field position. Freddie Akers sending out young Rich McIver out of Fort Stockton. Six feet four, 200 pounds of junior. It is he that moved Donnie Little over to wide receiver. Little was the quarterback last year. And Little, so when McIver misses him on the dead run, as he has three times tonight, I guess Donnie's a little understanding of what it is to be a quarterback. Little now is wide to the left. First down, McIver going on first down, puts it for a deep man, and it's Little. And Little goes down. He said, I tip. And they're saying he ran into Reggie Bonner. That it was not intentional. He did trip over Bonner, pushed him in the intent. He did have him beat, and he did get tripped, but both men were going for the ball, and the decision was good. The official was right on top of it. McIver had plenty of time to throw off the play action. He put the ball right down the middle of the field on the post, and there you can see the tripping as both men are going for the ball, and Bonner was playing the ball just as well as Little. Both men have equal right to it. Good decision. Second down and 10. 
Ronnie Mullins comes wide to the left now. MacGyver lets the dog get the ball. And they stopped it. By Kevin McDonald. First down in front of the 20-yard line, Houston. When you have a screen pass call, Jim, and there's somebody out there waiting for the screen, you eat the ball or you throw it way out of bounds. You don't let it hang up in the air as McIver does here. Straight drop back. Here comes the blitz. He drops the ball out there. Trying to throw, set up the screen to Jones. But the pass was too soft. The defense was too good. Jones just moving to the outside on the screen. And a very fine play by McDonald, picking it off. Well, the first time McIver was intercepted, Houston scored. Flags go down as Barrett carries the football inside the 15-yard line. And it is Houston that is walking backwards. McGuire intercepted at the 22-yard line, and Houston took it in. And again, the penalty is against Texas. Mistakes are eating him up. That's their fifth penalty so far. And all but we go back to one thing. You can't blame what is going on, I don't think. But I ask you as the game began, when you suspend the starting fullback or anybody from the squad, what does it do to a team? Maybe, perhaps. And I'm up here there down there. Their concentration is a little off as a result of what happened today. Well, it uh, certainly, particularly the men that were close to the suspended player. Uh, a squad is a squad with a great feeling within a squad, but there are always a few people closer. And the men who are the very good friends of the suspended player really hurt the most. I'm 20 to go. First half and it is second down and five and robert durham the sophomore picks up a couple it'll be third down and short as durham moves inside the 10 yard line and there's the man that made the interception this time kelly mcdonald a senior out of right here in houston a two-time high school all-american player and he was in the right place at the right time well we remember the great texas oklahoma game and oklahoma just roared around in that first half and texas came back in the second Longhorns may have to do the same thing in this ball game. Houston pitching out, lost. Better get on the football, and I think he does. That is David Barrett, the senior fullback out of Corpus Christi. Watched the ball bounce around, but finally got on top of it. It's Doug Shankle, number 48, was hot on his trail. And this is a tough, tough team against the rush. You can see the linebackers' pursuit. The ball was not handled cleanly. It appeared that Shankle had a chance to get to it, but it took a Houston bounce. Third down and eight. The only threats and the only score this ball game have come from Houston. They've not only scored a touchdown, but missed a 42-yard field goal. And apparently, barring a big mistake, will have at least a chance to field goal here. Here comes Wilson. Wilson pitches it out. He's got his man. And there goes the fullback, Barrett. Down to about the 10, but that is not close enough for the first down. And Spencer ran him out of bounds, and now the decision belongs to Bill Yoma. What do you do? It was great execution, though, by the quarterback, Wilson, who is impressing me more and more as this game goes along. Texas is pressuring him, but he's maintaining his cool. There's Mike Clendenin, a freshman. He missed a field goal here. He's four for six on the year, but before he became the kicker, Houston field goal kickers were one for eight. He is four for six, and this will be 26 yards. Golden opportunity to flag down. Hold on. They rough the kicker. First down, Houston. Missed the field goal. Rough the kicker. You've got to feel that uh, at least the first half, this is not our day. I want to tell you, Texas has made every mistake. Every penalty has been called against them. Glenn Denham now getting ready to try his kick. Barefoot a checker. You can see him miss, but you can also see the Texas man that didn't really hit the kicker. He hit the holder. First down and four to go for the touchdown. There to Durham, your running back. Now here's where Houston doesn't want to turn him over. Using that fear formation. P goes wide to the left. Roberson is wide to the right. There's Durham flashing down near the goal line. And I want to tell you, Bob Durham got to that line of scrimmage and beyond in a whale of a hurry. 
He thought he was in the end zone, but uh, he did hit just short of the goal line and slid into the end zone, I believe, as we're taking a look at it on a replay. A quick hit inside the first option, and I don't think this is much of an option. I think that Wilson's going to give him the ball here, and he found a little bit of daylight inside, but you can see his shoulders hit just short of the goal line before he skidded in. Second down, one yard to go. And there goes the fullback, and that is Barrett. Barrett got the touchdown, and Houston is up by 13. Costly mistake by Texas, especially as the field goal was missed and the holder was roughed up. And it gave him first and goal to go. Line takeoff here is not particularly effective, but uh, you can see the double team on Sims. And that did get him out of the way and open up just enough daylight for the touchdown. Now Clendenin, who has missed on two field goals tonight, but not on his point after touchdown. And again, the holder is Harmon. And this one is perfect. 6.44 to go. And Texas slightly favored in this game. If they lose, it's all up for grabs for the Cotton Bowl. And right now, it is Houston. 14. Texas, nothing. Glendennon will kick the ball off before this capacity crowd of better than 50,000 here in the Astrodome. Houston has moved out by two touchdowns. They lead 14 to nothing. The last score by the fullback, Barrett, from one yard out. for Barrett to get it in the end zone. Let's take one more look at it and watch number 60 block here. See him roll Sims to the outside. Not a lot of daylight, but extra effort putting it into the end zone. And one more shot from the end zone. Again, you can see the fine block on Sims. Well, I tell you, bud, you cannot fault the effort and the execution of Houston, but boy, as Texas had a tough job, the yellow flags have been flying everywhere and on big, big plays. Clendenin to kick it off along the ground, and that is Warshare watching the ball go out of bounds, and they'll come back to the 35 and kick it again. Texas uh, thus far has had a defensive holding penalty, a face mask penalty, an offside, a personal foul, an offside, and then roughing the kicker, so that's six penalties. Six penalties. 16 yards only after the interception by McDonald, but the big play after that was the roughing of the holder that allowed them the first down. Now here's Glenn Denon, who will have to kick it off from a 35-yard line with 6.44 to go in the first half. And there's the man who's been very cool. This man is just a sophomore from here in Houston, as we said. He started out the year as a third-string quarterback. But he looks pretty good tonight. He's a fine athlete, a great runner, and thus far has thrown the ball well. But then it doesn't appear to be your normal type kickoff, man. He just simply barrels the ball down the field instead of trying to loft it high in the air. He just hits a line drive and hopes that the bounce of the ball will make it difficult to handle and that they'll be able to get some kind of coverage. Dwayne Love has just come in and told Clendenin something. I don't know if it's kicking along the ground or what, yeah, but apparently that's what it is, kicking along the ground. Ball taking an odd hop, picked up by one of the up men for Texas, and he's not going to go very far, but still fair field position for the Longhorns, who have a lot of time left to this the first half. 6.38 to go, and they're hoping that McIver and company can get something going. As they come out, we see that the wide receiver will be Ronnie Mullins, number 88, the sophomore out of Plano, Texas, as they mark the ball at the 29-yard line. And again, there's a consultation, and let's see what this is. This time, the foul is against Houston, and also against Texas. Can you believe it? Offsetting penalty. <laughs> I'm not here rooting for Texas. I just cannot believe how the Longhorns have had everything go against them. And I thought for once, Houston is going to have to give up some yardage on the ground, but offsetting penalties on the personal foul, and McIver comes in. And he's not done too well. 0 for 6 and 2 interceptions. Texas starts tonight 6 and 1. Remembered one time, the Longhorns were number one of the country before Arkansas bounced it. Diver, back to his tailback, Jones, who doesn't go anywhere. Out to the 30-yard line, second down and nine. And that is all. And that looked like it was Raymond Robinson, a nose guard, a junior out of Corpus Christi, number 95, who made the stop. When you have a back like Jones and wide receivers uh, like Little, you may be able to break a running play as it's a reverse or any time a straight-ahead power play will go. But against this defense, uh, McIver's got to start hitting some passes. Second down, he's going to try again. Pursuit is there. Puts the ball up in there for grabs again, only it's going to be grabbed by someone far in back of the Houston bench. 
Greg Harmon was pursuing him and he simply just had to unload the ball. That was Herky Walls nearest to it. Beautiful job of defensive play by the entire Cougar defense. It's a rollout pass, but you can see the great pressure coming from the outside. Harmon believed that uh, put the great pressure on him, didn't let him turn the corner, and he simply threw the ball away. Third down and eight from their own 30 yard line. Houston up by 14 over Texas. There's the Giver running the football, and he's not got the first down. Tripped up by Raymond Robinson again, and John Goodson comes on again to kick the ball away again. And Houston defense is feeling better and better and better. Well, McIver's got to get it on track. Uh, when you are not able to execute the pass, the defense can just uh, ignore it, stand in there tough as Houston is doing. That is Linnell Fee waiting for the kick of John Goodson. Goodson gets it away. High spiral kick toward the sidelines. Fee takes it on the 12-yard line and immediate trouble right there. Gets maybe to the 13 or 14 and down he goes. First and 10 for Houston, 5-14 to go. Houston leads 14 nothing for Goodson. That was a 56-yard net kick, and that is outstanding. A reminder that next Saturday at 5 o'clock Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific time, we'll have the WBA Junior Middleweight Championship between Tadashi Mahara, who has won 14 and lost none, 11 of those 14 knockouts against Rocky Prato, who has won 24 and lost none, and he has nine knockouts. That'll be from Rochester, New York, here on ESPN. Saturday, 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific time. Ball on the 14-yard line, and there is a real out. I was told, but I'm trying to think of what they told me. I say that's a cougar, but there's another name. It's a different kind of animal. It looks like a cougar to me, and he represents the Houston Cougars. It's not a bobcat. I don't know what it is. Well, it could be a puma. It could be a puma, but I don't think that's what I heard either. I'll have to check that out. Handsome cat, though. <laughs> Beautiful cat. And guess what kind of a car Bill Yeoman drives. <laughs> <laughs> a little ad here. Well, we'll tell you again while there's time. Texas starts the game in the Southwest Conference. Three and one. Houston, three and two. Another game you'll see this weekend is Baylor, Arkansas. They're playing right now up at Fayetteville, Arkansas. They are all three and two. Wilson. Hey, look at this. He's going to throw and does, but it is dropped by David Roberson at the 24-yard line. Here he is, starting from inside his own 15-yard line, up 14 to nothing, five minutes and eight seconds to go, and Wilson puts the ball up. I think that it was a very wise call. Uh, he's rolling the outside. If he doesn't have a receiver open here, he can throw the ball out of bounds. He did lead the receiver a little bit too much. Bedford was in good position defensively. Incomplete pass. And if I don't like what he's doing, remember it is Bill Yeoman that's calling the play, so I've got to answer the bill, not the line. There he is again on second down, has his man, Fee. Fee very close to the first down at the 25-yard line. Hit hard there by William Graham, the free safety. But they're marking it, and they're moving the stick tie to the lead. First down, Cougar. And Wilson took quite a shot. You're not going to be able to run the ball against Texas uh, from this field position. I think the pass attack will loosen them up and open up the running. A very fine throw by McIver across the middle for the first down, or by Wilson across the middle. Roberson to the right and Fee to the left, and the ball is handed off, and going nowhere is Robert Durham. Maybe a yard or two. Diola, Diola, I should say, Kiki, the junior out of right here in Houston, Texas, the place with long ones, made the stop. What of the gain of two? Second down and eight to go. The clock continues to tick away in the first half. Four and a half minutes to go. And again, the Texas defense is number one in the country. They're number seven in rushing defense, giving up only 90.6 yards per game. Three times thus far tonight, Fee has caught a first down pass from Lionel Wilson. And off and straight ahead goes David Barrett. Out to the 30-yard line. It'll be third down and five as the clock continues to wind down. Kenneth Sims again coming back into the ball game. He and Weber have been out for the moment. As Ralph, I should say, Fred Akers likes to rest Sims and Weber, his tackles, bringing in Darnell and Haynes to replace them, and they now come out. So it's the number one group in there now. The tackles get attacked by two or three men on, on every single play, which means that uh, you're getting bumped and bruised on every shot. Getting a little breathing spell, and then you come back strong. Third down and five to go. 
And that's going to be shy as Ken Tim puts down Lionel Wilson. So it'll be fourth down. And now Lonnie Stokes will have to come in and kick the ball away. Wilson is awfully quick. This is the start of the option. You can see Sims just blow past his man. And that takes care of all of the options. Stokes standing inside his own 20. And Rob Morshell is back at the 30-yard line. And Texas looks like they would like to block this. They've got 10 men up front. They need some kind of big play before this half is over. And here they come, but he's going to get it away. Morshell is calling for a fair catch at the 36-yard line. And it's first and 10 Texas. They've got 2.57 to go in the half. Concern too. Let's see if Rick McIver can get untracked here. Sends Donnie Little in motion to the right. Hands to his tailback, A.J. Jan Jones, and Jones gets a couple of yards only, and the clock continues to run with less than three minutes now. Raymond Robinson playing a lot of nose guard tonight, along with Terry Monroe, the tackle on the right side, made the stop. Monroe's a good one, a senior out of Pleasanton, Texas, weighs 261. Second down. Cougars lead by two touchdowns over Texas. McIver, the blitz is on, gets it off, and Jan Jones almost looks as though it hits Jan and he didn't expect the ball there. Right off his shoulder pad. McIver was blitzed. Houston playing a great defensive game. Jones did not expect the ball to get there that quickly. McIver set. Here comes the blitz. Jones open. Ball hits him right on the numbers, and he does not hold it. Ball on the 37-yard line, and it is third down and nine. Little wide to the right. They've not thrown toward McCloney yet. And he is a speedster. And here's McIver looking for Herky Walls. And on the crossing pattern, he's got his tight end. Lars Sampleton, the senior out of Seguin, 6'6", 225. An All-American high school football and basketball player. Sampleton makes his eighth catch of the year. And this is the first completion of the game by McIver. He was 8-0 with two interceptions before he hit Stapleton on this pass, and that was well thrown. Hit him, Sampleton hit him right on the numbers. And the first down for Texas and the first completed pass. Ball on the 46-yard line. Little this time to the right. Walls to the left. First down, McIver. Back to throw. Rushes on. Trying to get out of it. Has to get it away. Puts it up. Maybe intercepted. No. Reggie Bonner almost intercepted with a diving stab, but could not do it. And again, McIver thrown almost another ill-gotten pass. Could have been a third interception against him. Not a uh, blitz at all, but just a very determined rush by the Cougars. McIver moves, shows he's got great athletic ability, forced to throw the ball, and almost threw an interception, just short enough to not enable the defensive cornerbacks to come up and make the play. Ball and 48 to go as we watch that diving try by Bonner again. McIver again back to throw. Gets it out. Has his fullback carry Orr there. And Orr barely gets back to the line of scrimmage before Grady Turner and Kelly McDonald knock him down. Turner the linebacker on the strong side. McDonald the end on that side who made an interception moments ago. Third down and nine with less than a minute and a half to go. These folks are from Texas. And I mean the University of Hook'em Horns. Ball at the 45-yard line of Houston. The last two snaps, uh, Houston has played the uh, cover rather than rush. Let's see what they do here. Walls right, little left. McIver on third down nine. They try to blitz, gets the ball away for Sampleton, and it goes off his hand. With him was Johnny Love, but Sampleton had a chance to make his second consecutive catch at the 29-yard line. And it is fourth down. They had the blitz on as we look at the defensive secondary dropping back. Sampleton appears to be open here on the right-hand side of your screen, and then he appears as he reaches the, for the ball to slip on the AstroTurf, lose his footing, or he might have made the re reception. Texas has decided but to take a timeout. Fourth down at nine, 101 to go in the half. And I did not think they're going to kick it away, but Fred Akers is now sending out John Goodson to kick the ball away. Goodson's had an outstanding punting night, but I think he hopes he never has to punt again. Well, if they don't kick it uh, and they don't make the first down, it just takes one play, and Houston's in field goal position. And I know that 
Cody Akers is thinking, as you've already said about that Oklahoma game, where they came back strongly in the second half, and I know at halftime that's what the Longhorns will hear. We can do it again. Well, there's a big difference also. Oklahoma is not in the Southwest Conference, and Houston he is. He better come back, or it's a scramble in that race for the Cotton Bowl with a tip of the hat towards the Houston Cougars. Because remember, Houston earlier this year defeated Arkansas 20 to 17 while Arkansas took Texas 42 to 11. Goodson has been averaging nearly 49 yards per punt tonight. He came into the ball game with about 41 and a half as the average. Another Standing thing. on his 40 and no one is going deep. They're going to let him punt it away just in case he decides not to, but he is going to punt it away. They'll try to down it, but no matter where it goes, and it went out of bounds at the 14-yard line. Bill Yeoman's crew can either play it safe and fall on the football, or they can try something razzle-dazzle, but I would doubt here they'll put it up, but I was wrong last time. 40 yards that time for Goodson, trying to angle it so it would stop inside the 10-yard line. He got inside the 15-yard line. There's your 54-second clock. 14 to nothing, the Cougars. Texas has only one timeout remaining, so it appears that Houston will be able to maintain possession of the ball, even though they have bad field position. Two interceptions. There's Wilson. Looks like a mix-up in the backfield, but they did not exchange the ball, so that's okay. Just remember that the two interceptions have set up the two short touchdown runs, one by Lionel Wilson, the other by David Barrett. That's the difference of the ball game. McIver each time intercepted inside the 30-yard line. Except for those two uh, where they got possession once in the 22, once in the 17, uh, Houston has had very bad field position due to the great kicking of Goodson. Felder wide right, but I think you can forget him. I just think Wilson's going to fall down, which he does, which should be the last play unless Texas decides to call a timeout, which they're not going to do. Robert Brewer, the second string quarterback, is warming up the Texas on the sideline. We may see him in the second half. This half is not over yet. Everybody's leaving to one and now officially it is over as the gun is down and Texas favors. Well, we're deep in the heart of and it's part of all games. Two interceptions led to those two scores. And so that's the end of the first half of the score. 14 and Texas nothing. And remember, Bud and I'll be back for the second half of the moment. Introducing the simple miracle Pogo, the safer, easier log splitter. Because of ever-rising fuel costs, more and more people are turning to their fireplaces and wood-burning stoves as alternate sources of heat. Wood is plentiful and renewable, but after the wood is cut, you still have the most difficult job of splitting the wood for stacking, aging, or burning. You could use an old-fashioned axe and wedge, but that's back-breaking work. And because of overhead swinging, it could be dangerous too. Now, here's Pogo. It splits logs in seconds while eliminating flying or jammed wedges and broken axe handles. Pogo is really easy to use. Simply place the wedge on the end of a vertical log, raise the sliding hammer, and drive down until Pogo splits the wood. That's it. The amazing sliding action hammer is the key. Pogo's rugged one-piece all-steel construction guarantees many years of reliable service. The Pogo system is convenient for use outdoors and indoors and can be used by anyone in your home. Pogo is easy to store and an occasional drop of oil is all the maintenance your Pogo needs. The simple miracle Pogo is just $39.95 plus $5 shipping, postage and handling. The Pogo can pay for itself in just one season of splitting your own wood. Pogo comes with a complete money-back guarantee. Now, here's how to order your Pogo. Remember, now's the time to stockpile and age wood for the long winter months ahead. To order your Pogo, send $39.95 plus $5 shipping and handling to Pogo. P.O. Box 121, Plainville, Connecticut, 06062. That's Pogo. P.O. Box 121, Plainville, Connecticut, 06062. Master Charge and Visa customers can call toll-free. 1-800-228-6556. That's 1-800-228-6556.
Well, again, everybody, welcome back to the ESPN Sports Center. Chris Berman with you. Hey, hope you're enjoying our uh, college football 81 game, Southwest Conference style. A lot of yelling going on as Houston leading the Texas Longhorns. will be going back down uh, to the Astrodome in just a couple of moments. Uh, afterwards, I'll tell you a couple things coming up on ESPN right after this. We are very proud of you, Peabody. Well, thank you, sir. Your design of the Firestone 721 is brilliant. Well... A tire using seven around two wrapped by one? Genius. Oh, 24 million on the road, Peabody. And we're grateful. Uh, Chief, I Just could... one more thing. Sure. Now, Peabody, we want you to top it. <laughs> top it? The Firestone 721. It's one tough tire to top. Sunday, big day on ESPN. We've got the Atlanta Journal 500 Auto Race coming away at 12.30 live, our first NASCAR event. We also have at 4 o'clock live professional football from Canada Western Division semifinal playoff between British Columbia and Winnipeg. So a big afternoon coming up. But now let's go back to the game. Houston leads the Longhorns. Enjoy it. Good service isn't giving people what they expect. No, it's giving them more than they expect. Avis knows that. So when you make a reservation, Avis makes a commitment, and they honor it. Uh, Morgan? Uh, see, even if you're six hours late, now you might be willing to pay a little more for this service, but at Avis, you don't have to. Trying harder is still the best way to do business. Come with Timex to find every technology in time. Choose a traditional Timex that you wind with famous Timex dependability. Classic Timex look. Travel with digital watches, time and space. Look for new quartz watches with all the accuracy and beauty of the cosmos. All built and priced in the Timex tradition from 1695. Timex, we make technology beautiful. What's more natural than pasta and beer? Ah, what's more natural than natural light from Anheuser-Busch? <laughs> the beer with a taste for food. It's natural, and it's light. So when you want to leave room for more... What's more natural than natural light? Welcome back to the Astrodome in Houston, Texas, where the Cougars have won the first half, at least. 14 to nothing on the Texas many, many, many mistakes. And I'm not an investigative reporter. I've not talked to Fred Akers at halftime. Bud and I are sitting up here, but I must repeat a question to you, Bud, that I asked earlier. First of all, you and I tried to see Coach Akers this morning. He was involved with several young men. We thought at the time something must be up because Coach Fred Akers does not break an appointment. We didn't know what it was, but we thought something must be up. Before the game, they announced that Robinson, their fullback, has been suspended indefinitely, a starter. And I ask you then, and I'll ask you again, what effect do you think it could have or is having on Texas with the way they're playing football in this first half, taking nothing away from Houston's aggressiveness? Well, when you lose a starter, uh, it shocks the squad, particularly when you lose him right before a game as important as this game. However, in Fred Akers, we have a football team without discipline on and off the field as a team that has never got a future. So I can't argue. I don't know what caused it, but uh, I know it wouldn't uh, have been done by Coach Akers if it hadn't been necessary. But the shock factor certainly has done something to Texas' ability to concentrate. They had six penalties, Jim, in the first half. Uh, those penalties just killed them. Uh, McIver threw two interceptions. One gave the ball to Houston on the 20 yard line another one gave it to him on the 14 yard line uh, it's been really a defensive battle but uh, Texas has not played well all right let's get the first one LaCroix made the interception of the 22 yard line and they worked the ball down to the four yard line and Lionel Wilson went into action beautiful execution of the option the inside fake froze the Texas linebackers the men that were shooting the gaps were trapped and he went into the end zone Wilson did almost untouched uh, they had got a great fake to set up the second touchdown. They'd missed a field goal, got a penalty for roughing the holder. And there's the handoff to Barrett driving in. They double teamed Sims, were able to turn him out of the way, which is a very difficult thing to do, but he got just a little daylight to put him into the end zone for the score. All right, the bands are on the field now, so you don't know, and I don't know either. But just as we went off at the end of the half, I said, hold it, Robert Brewer. 
the number two quarterback to McIver was warming up. And I'm just wondering if we will not see a change in the second half again. Well, it's very hard to uh, do a dramatic turnaround. Pitchers have bad days. Passers have bad days. And McIver in the first half had a bad day. He was two of 12 passes for only 17 yards. And he threw those two interceptions that I've already talked about. Uh, so I would expect that uh, he may start, but if he doesn't move it better, we will see the, some other men at quarterback. And I think we can safely say that the Cotton Bowl is at stake, barring another big upset down the road. And right now, the road to the Cotton Bowl looks pretty good for Houston, which has been there twice since Texas was last there. Statistics? Well, we'll take a look at them when we come back to the capacity crowd that's so excited here because at halftime, the Cougars are leading the Longhorns for nothing. In 1977, the Rockwell Society issued this historic collector's plate, the toy maker. It celebrates the lasting genius of America's best-loved artist, Norman Rockwell. This exceptional plate was originally issued at $14.50, yet now it's valued at over 20 times that amount. Just one reason why limited edition collector's plates are now the world's most widely traded art form. At the heart of this dynamic market is the Bradford Exchange. As the world's largest trading center for the buying and selling of collector's plates, Bradford is in an excellent position to recommend particular plates that show exceptional promise. And now, an important new series of Rockwell Society plates, portraying Rockwell's unique vision of the American woman, is available through the Bradford Exchange. The first plate, Dreaming in the Attic, is a sensitive work of art that has earned a place of prominence in Rockwell's artistic legacy. Dreaming in the Attic is a true Rockwell classic. It features a rim of 14 karat gold on fine china and is produced in a limited edition restricted to 100 firing days. Each hand-numbered plate bears the Edwin M. Knowles China Company and the Rockwell Society seal and comes with their certificate of authenticity. And now, Dreaming in the Attic can be yours at the original issue price of $19.50. To assure your satisfaction, Bradford guarantees to buy back your plate at the original price at any time within one full year, so you risk nothing. As a special bonus, you'll also get a free copy of Plate World, the deluxe magazine that helps you explore the world of collector's plates. To order Dreaming in the Attic and get your free copy of Plate World magazine, here's all you do. VOD and credit card orders, phone toll-free 1-800-228-5005 or save COD charges by sending 1950 to the Bradford Exchange, 9345 Milwaukee Avenue, Department 776, Chicago, or phone 1-800-228-5005. Limit one plate per customer. It is 14 to nothing, as you can see. And, Bud, I'm going to ask you a question before we show the statistics again. What happens, and we've discussed it, but I want to make it clear, if the Cougars do hold on and do upset Texas and pull into a tie in the Southwestern Conference, both teams would uh, have two losses. Well, they are looking down everybody else's throat because if they defeat Texas, they've already defeated Arkansas. They have only Rice and Texas Tech left, and they'd be the favorites to beat them and get to the Cotton Bowl. All right, now to those statistics. In my eye, it goes immediately to the turnovers, the two that killed Texas, the two intercepted passes that set up the two scores. Uh, one was from the 22-yard line, the other from the 14, and that one was aided by a missed field goal where the kicker was rubbed. You can see that it truly is a defensive battle. Total yards, 90 by Texas, only 115 by Houston. Uh, time of possession, though, is all in favor of the Cougars, but the team that throws the ball the best here in the second half will be the team that will prevail. And remember, Texas stopped themselves and helped Houston along with six penalties. The teams are back on the field, and we're about to start the second half in a moment. And Houston has won the first half, and they hope to win the ball game. Why do you like the game, Mr. Peabody? I'm afraid so, Rose. You were the genius who designed the Firestone 721 tire. That's my problem. They want me to top it. Top it? But isn't the 721 what they call a, a winner? Oh, sure. It's got seven around two wrapped by one. There's 24 million on the road, you know. And you're going to top that, Mr. Bill? Well, <laughs> <laughs> the Firestone 721. It's one tough tire to top. <laughs> you can't count on anything these days. Did you type the letter I told you to type? No. 
with possibly one exception, Federal Express, when it absolutely positively has to be there overnight. And teeing it up to kick off will be Raul Allegra, a Mexican citizen who went to school in Sheldon, Washington to learn high uh, to learn English. And he's going to be kicking the ball off to number 34, Jordan of Houston. And so Houston leading 14 to nothing will get its hands on the football. First thing here to start the second half. And the Cougars have not made the mistakes that they did against SMU when they lost here. In this Astrodome, Jordan's not going to bring it out. A wise decision. He comes out to the 20 yard line. And so Lionel Wilson, number 12, the quarterback. Robert Jones, 43. David Barrett, 18, the running backs. David Roberson, number nine, and Leon Filler, 84. Alternated flanker backs bringing in the plays. Lionel Fee, who's made a couple of big catches, number 15, that's split end. And Mark Ford, the tight end, they have not thrown to him yet. Ranson, Marshall, Kidd, Grimes, and Pfeiffer along the forward wall for Houston. And the Texas band is adjoining its number one defense in the nation to hold that team. And here comes the man not being held at all, Robert Durham, picking up six yards. Tackled by Eric Holly. Holly, Kenneth Sims, Mark Weber, Kiki Duala, the front four, Bruce Schultz, Doug Shankle, Jeff Lighting, the linebackers, Vance Bedford, Mike Hatchett, the cornerbacks, Bobby Johnson and William Graham, the free safety. Second down and four, and that's a way for the Cougars to start the second half with a six-yard pickup. Now Polk and Barrett are the running backs. Polk listed as fullbacks. There's Wilson carrying the football. Flips it out and down goes Alan Polk. They have gotten a yard and that is all. That reverse pivot by quarterback Wilson before he moves down the line takes one of the options away and it becomes just a pure quarterback pitch type option. But the misdirection of his making that pivot is supposed to freeze the defensive linebacker. Third down and three from the 27 yard line. Roberson wide to the right. And off, first down. Houston rolls across the 30. David Barrett, who scored a touchdown on a one-yard plunge, takes up four big yards out to the 31-yard line. And they will move the stick. William Graham made the start. Let's watch the great takeoff of the Houston line. This is the first option, and that's the inside option. And you can see that they broke it packed inside of Sims. Let's take a look at it from the end zone. Sims moved to the inside, which was caused it. He was stunning to the inside. His shankle came to the outside, but they picked up the stunt. The elder is wide to the right. Here comes Wilson rolling for the football and gets out to the 35-yard line. A pickup of four for Lionel Wilson. Stopped there by Doug Shankle, the middle linebacker. And in a second down and six to go. 13-21 to go. We're in the third quarter. The Cougars lead it 14 to nothing. And again, that Texas secondary, Jim, is playing awfully close. The deepest man they have when the ball is snapped is only about four to five yards from the line of scrimmage, maybe six at the maximum. Wilson pitches back. That is bad, and Denver just does get back to the line of scrimmage. Strung out there by Mike Hatchett, number two, the senior from San Antonio. And it'll be third down and about five to go from the 35-yard line. Actually, closer to six. Bill Yeoman, his squad has done an outstanding job. He is now sending in Leon Felder, the senior from Fort Worth, with the play. He's crossed me up a few times by running inside on this type of yardage, but uh, the normal thing is the option pass to run on a rollout. Texas goes with five defensive backs. Wilson throws. Ford drops the ball. Mark Ford, the tight end, first time they thrown to him, would have been a first down, took a big cut, and he dropped the ball. And they're talking things over at the line of scrimmage with the official. You can see the fake inside, again the reverse pivot. Wilson throwing the ball on the run, hits Ford, but Ford is hit, cannot control the ball. This time Houston is judged to be offside, and of course Texas refuses that penalty. And so Lonnie Stokes will kick the ball away to Rob Morshell. There is Stokes, out kicked in the first half by the senior John Goodson of Texas. And there's another freshman, but for Texas, Rob Morshell, back on his 26-yard line. This will be the first chance for the Longhorns of the second half to get their hands on the football. Oh, fine kick by Stokes, driving Morshell back to the 17-yard line. 
And down he goes at about the 23 or 24. Alan Pope, the fullback, got down to make the stop. Along with Craig Harmon. He hit a few uh, poor kicks in the first half. I think he was a little bit worried about being rushed here. He takes lots of time as he gets ready to kick the ball. Drops it perfectly. Looks it onto his foot. And that's as fine form as you can have. 36 net yards on the punt. Robert Brewer, a junior out of Richardson, Texas, number 16, is the new quarterback. McIver is not starting the second half. Fred Akers has to come out all stops. That is going to Brewer. Two wide receivers to the left side. And the result of the same, Dan Jones. Jones picks up a couple of yards. No back, aside from McIver scrambling, carried the ball for Texas in the first half, except for Jam Jones. And even though there's a new quarterback, it is A.J. Jam Jones who carries it here. Well, Robinson, uh, who was suspended, uh, was their fullback. Uh, I don't believe that uh, Freddie Akers has a lot of confidence in Orr's ball carrying ability because the fullback has not carried the ball this far. Orr is the fullback, number 37. And there is Jones again, and down he goes. Little and McClawney are wide receivers, sampled on the tight end to Boker, Jaron, Babb, Dawson, and Tout. The forward wall for Texas. It is McDonald, Callaway, McGowdy, and Monroe, Harmon. The front five for Houston, Turner and Harris, the linebackers. McGuire and Bonner, the corners and Love and Easton, the free safety. Jones has carried 17 times for 64 yards. Third down, four to go. Brewer. 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 Down at the 34-yard line, and he's got a first down. First down, Texas. As Weedy Harris, Callaway and Turner put him down. We haven't seen Drew before, but he's uh, got some speed. Opts in a pass run, which is simply sprint out. Seen following the two backs out of the I formation. Houston drops back to cover the passes. He quickly makes a decision to run with the ball, and he's a clever runner. Ball is on the 34-yard line. 14 to nothing, Houston. 10.50 to go, third quarter. Little comes wide left. McCloney wide right. Brewer pitches the ball back, and that is Orr, and Orr gets up to the 40-yard line, and there's the first time that a back other than A.J. Jones has carried the football. Terry Orr, the sophomore out of Abilene, Texas. And it's the first time that Texas has run the option play. Brewer executed it extremely well. A six-yard pickup, second down and four, and that is Orr. Number 37. The Texas fans hoping that Robert Rohr can erase that 14-point deficit. Second and a long three from the 41. <laughs> Out of the high formation this time. Ball is carried by A.J. Jam Jones again. And very close to a first down again at the 44-yard line of Texas. They've been in split backs on the last two plays. That gives him a better inside fake to run the option play and gets the two pass receivers out into the pass patterns much more quickly. Third down on the yard to go. But what happens? You've now prepared for McIver. You played against McIver for a half, and now you got a man you have prepared for. Their next quarterback, then Robert Brewer. Just a question of how well Brewer executes. And he appears to be quicker than McIver, at least uh, than McIver was this evening. Third down. A yard to go. Houston territory at the 49 yard line. Longhorns at first down as Weedy Harris makes the stop. Jones has carried every time but one. This is simply the toss sweep from the I formation. Throws it back. Jones has the ball following the lead of Orr. Cuts back inside when he sees a little bit of daylight. Drives forward knowing that it was short yardage and easily picked up the first down. We now have word, bud, that Rick McIver has a shoulder injury and is not even back on the sideline. So this may be out of necessity of injury rather than replacement. Brewer dropping back. Brewer gets the ball away and overthrows the Tony. At the 24, 14-yard line, Calvin Easton was beaten by McCloney, but Brewer, under pressure, could not get the ball to him as Monroe was putting the pressure on. You have to give the rush a great deal of the credit for the incompleted pass. 
Brewer fakes inside. That was the fake to Orr. Sets up and he gets a feels the pressure there. You can see him kind of losing his stance, taking a couple of jerk steps forward. McConium was wide open, but he failed to put the ball to him. Second down 10. This is the first time that Brewer has failed to pick up yardage on a first down play. First time he's faced second down and 10. And goes to his tailback. And down goes number 45, John Walker, carrying the ball for the first time. After picking up maybe a yard, it is third down to nine. Reggie Vonner made the stop. Very good play by Vonner. Excuse me, Jim. The corner man is your contain man most of the time. And he came up and made a very solid tackle. I don't know why I want to do this, but I just love what Reggie Vonner said in the TCU game. It was so rainy. And they were so ineffective, they said, well, did the rain bother you? And he said, no, but the water did. That was last week. Brewer rolling out this way, faking, and he won't get much. The flag is down on the 35-yard line in the secondary. Flag is down. Callaway made the stop, but hold on. Houston may be penalized as the ball was thrown in their territory at the 35. Maybe that's why Brewer never had a chance to get the ball off. Texas scores with 8.25 to go now in the third quarter, and they are right back in the ball game. Certainly Brewer has moved them very smartly. Takes the ball down to the 32-yard line. Holding is the call against the Cougars of Houston. The Texas bench is standing. And so is a Houston bench across the way. This key drive uh, gives Texas a great deal of confidence. There's plenty of time left if they can put seven on the board. Donnie Little wide to the right, McCloney to the left. Brewer throws it on for Donnie Little. Little bomb tackle. My goodness, what a tackle across the way. What a play by James Durham, a junior out of Lufkin, Texas, playing the left cornerback spot. Number three. Didn't quite get the lead blockers in front of what was really a quick screen pass. Brewer faking, but there was no back really to fake to. He turns, throws the screen out, but you can see that the blockers are too far inside. The Durham is able to get up and make the play before they can get in front of him. 7.35 left, third quarter, little to the left. Big play, second down eight. Texas going left. There's a pitch back on the option play to Orr, and Orr is knocked out of bounds at about the 26-yard line by Calvin Eason, and it'll be third and about five yards to go. One thing, Jim, that does bother you is that Texas has not been running the option, and if you haven't practiced against the option, even though it's a big part of your own offense, the, the timing of that is a little difficult to handle when you haven't worked on it during the week. Here comes Herky Walden, number 11, with a play for Robert Brewer, the quarterback. Out comes McCrony. Ball is on the 27-yard line, third down and five. Fans come to their feet. Brewer looking, throwing, and the ball is almost intercepted. Oh, Turner thought, he, or rather, Love thought he had it, number 48. I thought he might have it too, Jim. He just overthrew Sampleton just a little bit. Sampleton is a great target, 6-6. Six, six. Inside fake to Orr, crossing pattern, and the ball goes to the Texas, affirming the Houston defender, but he couldn't quite hold it. The Sampleton didn't quite get time enough to turn his pattern to the outside. Love absolutely had it right in his hand. So now from 45 yards out, Raul Allegra, for five one, 45 yards out, a lot of fun. It's good! And Texas is on the board. And a 45-yard field goal by Allegra. 7-13 to go, third quarter. Isn't this a wild team in the heart of Texas? Houston 14, Texas 3. Engine needs a rebuild. I bring it to Joe. That's me. And you know what he's rebuilding a lot more of these days? Four-cylinder engines. Small engines work a lot harder than big engines. So if you have a small car, it's even more important to take care of it right. Change the oil regularly. And put in a new Fram oil filter when you're supposed to. A Fram filter doesn't cost much. I do. But the choice is yours. You can pay me now. Or pay me later. Here come the aluminum cans headed for recycling. Today, billions are tumbling in. And that's good news because recycling helps the economy by creating thousands of new jobs, by relieving overburdened landfills, 
by paying millions of dollars to collectors and by saving energy, a full 95% of the energy needed to make new aluminum from bauxite. We can't wait for tomorrow. Alcoa can't wait. Last week, Raul Allegra kicked four field goals, tying a Texas record against Texas Tech. And here is his 45-yarder today. This is perfect form. You see his eyes on the ball. He's watching the flat of it. He knew it was good the moment he hit it. You can get that feel of the ball as your foot hits it. And he knew he hit it perfectly, and he's a happy man. He could have, that could have been from 55 or maybe 60 yards away. He had a lot of foot. Now again, Jordan is the deep man for Houston. Donald is a sophomore on the right here in Houston. And will return the kickoff. Amalekma. Ball is high. At the goal line. Norton. 15, 17 yard line. And down he goes. It looked like Ford, the linebacker, made the stop. I thought he was going to get a little something going up the middle. He's look at the scoring drive and move 50 yards before the 45-yard field goal. Outside of the cover closed in, even though the wedge up the middle appeared to have made pretty good daylight. Robertson comes to the right, and now it is time for Lionel Wilson and company to show a little poise of their own. They were leading 14 to nothing, and down goes Allen Holt. We have not seen Robert Durham. They're using two fullbacks. And I'm wondering whether it's because of the field position they have or whether something might be wrong with Durham. In any event, we've had two fullbacks the last two times that Houston has had the football, and admittedly, each time it's been well within their own territory. I still feel Jim, the team that throws the ball the best and seems going to be eventually the winner. Leon Felder out wide to the right. Houston has not been gambling in the second half, and now they do put the ball up. The man is there. That is speed. He's got the first down near the 35-yard line. Hatchet puts him down, but Ronald C has been outstanding today. That is another big first down catch, his fourth of the game. You can see the speed that he has as he drives downfield. The Texas defender has got to drop back. He breaks it to the outside. Wilson had faked a bootleg. He got one-on-one -on -one coverage over there. Fee just simply defeated the Texas defender. And a Texas man is down on the field. With 6.28 to go in the third quarter, the Cougars hoping for the upset leading 14 to 3 over the Longhorns of Texas. Ah, good choice. The beer with a taste for food. Natural light from Anheuser-Busch. Not too filling, but oh, so satisfying. When you're ready, really ready to eat, being helped off the field is an outstanding defensive lineman, Mark Weber, six feet one, two thirty-three, a senior who plays alongside of Kenneth Sims. Next weekend we go from madness to madness. Notre Dame at the Air Force Academy, one of our games. Notre Dame a big winner today. Michigan, 70 points today against Illinois, meets Purdue, and Bud and I will be in the state of Missouri, the Show Me State, Oklahoma and Missouri, and Oklahoma still in the race for the Big Eight Championship and the trip to the Orange Bowl, all on ESPN. First down, 10, and Holt picks up the yardage out to the 39-yard line, actually five yards, let's make it, and call it second down, five. The line takeoff here is excellent. See the blocking, Sims moving to the outside. He can't quite get over far enough to help on this play. And Polk does pick up reasonably good yardage on first down. On the 39-yard line, the Cougars will try to hang on to this football for a while now. Felder, the left position to the right. Wilson, Wilson, pitches the ball out. First turnover of the game. Texas has it, 36 yard line. First turnover of the game. Diallo comes up with the Aaron Pitchell. And I want to tell you, the momentum has changed. This is the first really bad play Wilson has made. He forces this terribly. 
Fake to the inside, turns up field, and he's hit. The man is all over him as he pitches the ball out. And the man was coming from the outside, and behind him, we had no chance to get the ball to him. It's an easy recovery for Texas, and excellent field position on the 36. They're talking about the poise, and Houston has lost a little bit. Brewer calling signals from the 36-yard line. A.J. Jam Jones looking for a hold and gets a couple of yards. Inside the 35, down to the 33-yard line. Ramiro Trust and Weedy Harris made the stop. The clock winds down to 5.35, third quarter. Cougars up by 11, but Texas in the third quarter has been coming back. McClone comes in with the play for Robert Brewer. Second down, seven to go from the 33, make that the 33 and a half yard long. A little right, McClone left. And Brewer rolling out, looking to throw, puts it up and has it down. First down inside the 20 yard line. Lawrence Sample of the tight end, his second big catch of the day. Now mark it at the 15. Fine throw by Brewer and good execution by Sample. There's a little bit of an inside pick to Jones. The rollout, he sets before he throws it. Sample was broken down and out. If he had a little more field, he might have been able to turn it up and get more yardage. A touchdown here, and Texas is right back in the driver's seat. Even though they'll still be playing uh, behind, because Houston has lost a little poise. Fumbling the ball away. And it looks as though Texas goes offside. Looks like the left side of the line went offside for Texas. Oh, let's see if they take the five yards or whether they take the play, which picked up just a yard or two. They're calling it motion, actually. But it looks to me, Bud, as though the left side of the line went off. I thought the left side jumped too, Jim, and that's if the, whatever the official chooses to signal. Uh, it is illegal procedure when the offense jumps offside. Brady Turner, the defensive captain, says we'll take the yardage in this case and move it back outside the 20-yard line. It is still first down, but now first and 15. Brewer has played extremely well. There you can see the guard, that's Sharon, moving before the snap. Balls to the right now and Little to the left. And Brewer rolling out. Flag down as he overthrows Little at the nine-yard line. And the flag went down very quickly and went down in the backfield. But it is a Houston man who is upset. Terry Monroe says, how can that be? What is happening here? But now it is Texas that is walking back. And they're talking to Houston. Well, the flag was flown. I'm thrown. I've got a feeling it was against the Longhorn. We'll see in a moment, though. There's been no clear definitive signal that I have seen. And now he will tell us again motion. This time refused. So it is second down and 15. Second time in a row. This is what happened to Texas in the first half. They not only helped the Cougars along with their penalties, but they held themselves up with penalties. And now two straight times they have gone in motion or offside. 4.51 to go. Third quarter, 14 to 3. And second down, 15 from the 20. Turkey Walls in motion. Brewer, back to the left of that oh, oh, they have that? Don't love the slow safety knew exactly what was happening. And he was coming on the blitz that time, expecting the pass. And he's got the blitz coming, and they try a deep naked reverse. The safety man coming on the blitz has got to be open, but he made a very good tackle. Let's watch it again. There's a quick toss back to Jones. Here comes the reverse. And here comes Love, who was blitzing and gets the possible pass, which was expected. Here he comes right from the start. You can see him there at the top of your screen, and he simply watches the play develop, comes in and makes a fine tackle. Third down, 25, and Robert Brewer says, we want timeout. I want to find out what they want to do. So Texas has called timeout with the ball at the 30-yard line. Third down and 25, 438 to go in third quarter. At Houston leading, and Texas on the spot. Out of the blue comes the ice blue freshness of Aqua Velva. Out of the blue comes the Aqua Velva man. Looking for the light scent, the clean scent, the fresh scent that comes from out of the blue. There's something about an Aqua Velva man. Be one. Houston, Texas, where it is 14 to 3. I'm Jim Simpson with Bud 
Wilkinson. And Robert Gould, a junior out of Richardson, Texas, has talked to the Texas coaching staff. He's got the word on third down and 25. Well, on the 30-yard line. Decision Bill Yeoman has got to make. Do we want to blitz? Do we expect him to throw the ball here? Or do we want to see if we can't cover every receiver? Parky Walls goes to the right. Donnie Little goes to the left. And the Texas and Houston fans get to their feet. Brewer back, has the time, puts it high in the air, intended for Little, and overthrows everybody, and it's fourth down. Bonner was the man with Johnny Little. No flag thrown. On comes Allegra, who woke moments ago, kicked a 45-yard field goal. This will be longer than that. Very fine uh, pass defense by Houston. They had all the receivers covered. Brewer sees that no one is open, and he gets the ball where no one can make an interception. From 47 yards out, Allegra will try this one. Texas has been knocking at the doors, come away with one field goal. Now tries another one from 47 yards out. It is no good. He misses. And the score remains 14 to 3. And maybe a little of the wind went out of that impressive Texas third quarter. But when you get the first turnover of the game on your opponent's 36-yard line, come up empty, uh, it does take a little out of you. And Houston has the ball at the 34. Check that, let's call it the 29. Bill Yeoman will cross the way. Yeoman didn't know what to expect, but he thought his team was ready to play. Durham is back in. And that is Barrett, the fullback, running room in front of him, gets across the 35, out to the 36-yard line. And that is a gain of seven, second down and short, as Barrett swept wide and deep around the left side. Four minutes and seven seconds to go to third quarter. Uh, the reverse uh, option has been much better for Houston than the normal option with just one or two plays. The Texas defense is moving so rapidly with the first fake that the backs going the wrong way do pull them momentarily out of position. Lyndon, Wilkinson, Roland, Sharp, and Pfeiffer. Now the front line for Houston as there's the first down. David Barrett across the 40-yard line. Moving behind Grimes and Pfeiffer on the right side. Pfeiffer could be outstanding. He could be the best, they say, in the history of Houston. And that includes J.D. Kimmel and Wilson Whitley. As a matter of fact, Pfeiffer said, I came here because they did such a good job with Whitley. And they know, I know they appreciate good offensive linemen. Durham and now Alan Polk are your setbacks. Durham 43, Polk the fullback number 32. First down. Durham carries the football out to the 44-yard line. Second down and seven. Uh, two tight ends that time by Houston, which is the first time I believe they've used that formation. It makes you a little bit tougher from the standpoint of stopping the run because you get an extra blocker. John Haynes made the stop. A reminder that the winner here has a great shot at the Cotton Bowl, whether it be Texas or Houston. Second and seven. Inside goes Barrett, the fullback, and it's going to be third down and three or four yards to go. And Houston Butt continues with a notable exception the Barrett run around left end to walk inside, work inside. Number 78, you see right in the middle of the screen, is Pfeiffer, the great offensive blocking tackle for the University of Houston. 6'6", 263 pounds. It's a lot of force coming off the line. David Roberson comes in, the sophomore from Dallas, with the play for Lionel Wilson, the quarterback. On third down and about four to go from the 47-yard line. Wilson with the football, trying to beat his man, Roberson. There's an intercepted goal. It's incomplete. The Texas man thought that he'd intercepted Vance Bedford. And Roberson did an outstanding job of playing kind of defensive back there and taking the ball away from Bedford, the cornerback. This is real wrestle for the ball. A little quick and inside fake. Wilson throwing on the run down the sidelines. It appears that Bedford has made the interception here, but the ball is just wrestled away from him and goes loose. Neither man had control of the football. Incomplete pass. Lonnie Stokes standing on his 32. Rob Morskell is deep on his own 11. Stokes. Well, I tell you, Morshell called for a fair catch, and it looked to me like he had some running room. Inside the 20-yard line, people were five to seven yards upfield by the time he got there and caught the ball, but that's judgment, and Morshell's judgment was that uh, he's going to call for a fair catch. A 34-yard net punt. Texas has the football 
but Houston's got the lead 14 to 3, two minutes to go in the third quarter. And don't you think this is the wild one? Here's the Astrodome in Houston. The question is how well is Brewer going to throw the football? It's going to be very difficult to run against this Houston defense. They began to look like they were going to open it up a little bit, and the option play also has added another dimension to the problem for the Houston defense. That's that big man from Texas. And that is Texas Spike. I've heard that quite often. Yeah. <laughs> that that chill down your spine. It's so thick, too. <laughs> Longhorns have never lost here in the Astrodome to Houston, but then again, they haven't played here too many times against the Astrodome in Houston. They no longer play outdoors. The Cougars play in the Astrodome, and as we told you earlier, Bill the Open, the coach said that's one more thing you don't have to worry about, whether it's going to rain or not. Walls left. And Robert Brewer with the Giver on the sideline. And Dan Jones carries the football, and he is jammed up hard by Eugene Lockhart, number 89, a reserve linebacker for the Cougars. A gain of five, second down five, 14 to three Houston. Sam Jones is a very effective runner and an impressive runner. Strong back as well as being a very quick, fast back. Ball is on the 24 yard line. Roar, and again, and look out, there goes Jones all the way back, thrown back by Terry Monroe to the 10 yard line. Monroe, the senior out of Pleasanton, just burst through that offensive line of the Longhorns and threw it from the 24 back to the 10. They will mark it at the 19. Have the stunt on. Texas does not do a good job of taking care of the stunt. He moved to the inside, back to the outside. It was a little bit of a counter fake and went through almost untouched. You know, it's funny where they marked the football, bud. Third down on the 19-yard line when they took him all the way back to the 10, but I guess they figured he'd have stopped way back before he kept wrestling it back. Brewer still with the football, and the time going deep, and Tennant for Zaccone! No, that is Templeton, who wants an interference penalty and does not get it. Ron Templeton on a double coverage, went down, and it's fourth down. I think every pass receiver wants an interference penalty anytime he doesn't catch the football. A pretty good inside fake that time. Jones carried the fake out well. Brewer throws the ball down the field to Sample Room. It appears that he's got a step or two on the defender. But I don't believe there was any interference on the play. Another look at it from the sideline and you can see him going for the ball and also the Arkansas, pardon me, the Houston men going for the ball. John Goodson has had an outstanding punting night. And this is a fair catch called for by Fee back inside the 35-yard line. Fair field position for Houston. But the big thing is that this third quarter is only 34 seconds from being over. And Houston, which led 14 to nothing at the half, leads 14-3 now. Goodson with a net 46-yard punt. He has just been outstanding. Came in, as we said, with about a 41-and-a-half-yard average, but averaging much better than that here in the Astrodome. He must like the no-win factor, Jim, that you get here. Lionel well, Wilson comes in. He is their leading rusher as well as their quarterback. And remember, this young sophomore from Houston is not calling the plays. His coach, Bill Yeoman, is. And Yeoman calls a first down pass. And the ball is dropped by Mark Ford. That's the second time they've thrown him tonight. And the second time that Ford, have an outstanding year, has dropped the football. And he was wide open. The pass was a little bit underthrown, but I don't think badly enough thrown that Ford should not have been able to make the catch. Well, he's made 25 catches before tonight, Bud, for three touchdowns, but has dropped two almost perfectly thrown balls tonight. And that was a costly error. Houston needs to move the football here. Second down and 10. Wilson takes his back, and there goes Barrett, the fullback. Barrett gets across the 35-yard line, up to the 37-yard line. Daniel Sim standing over there. William Graham over there as they mark the football. And there's a flag down. And the Navy against Texas again. Uh, it is, Jim. I missed the signal. I don't know if it's a face mask or unnecessary roughness. One of the two. Well, yeah. it looks to me Just like it's unnecessary again. roughness the way he's going. Way across in the Texas territory. 
Isn't that something? Mark Ford drops the pass, which would have given him a first down. You said Houston has to keep moving the football, and Texas does it. And Fred Akers must be wondering what can happen next. We have stopped ourselves. Two interceptions inside the 22-yard line have given Houston their only scores. And straight ahead goes Barrett. That's one of the few times that uh, popping straight ahead has worked well. Second down and five on the 43-yard line of Texas as the third quarter has ended. Cougars, 14, Longhorn, three. What a game. There's got to be a way to top the 721. George Peabody, go to sleep. Look, I designed the Firestone's tire using seven around two wrapped by one. There are 24 million on the road. Still, I ought to be able to top it, right? Right. Of course, it'll take time. Nights, some weekends, maybe, <sighs> maybe months, years, a lifetime. Maybe never. What? Did you say never? Never. Never? The Firestone 721. It's one tough tire to top. Astrodome has got a capacity crowd on hand tonight, and they're about equally divided between Houston residents and fans and University of Texas fans who have come down from Austin or who live here. Everybody recognizes that turnovers are bad errors, but penalties are the same kind of errors. Houston's been penalized three times thus far for 19 yards, Texas eight times for 75 yards. And that's a major difference. And they all seem to be at the wrong time. They do it for the Longhorns. But all on a 43-yard line. Felder goes wide to the right. B comes to the left. It is second down and five to go. And down goes Barrett, the fullback. Barely got back to the line of scrimmage and maybe a yard more. Now it's going to be third down and about four. Mike Buchanan made the tackle. Well, if they're going to go to the Cotton Bowl, Texas had better wake up. If they're going to go to the top road, Houston better hang on and maintain the poise in the football. And no turnovers, as you said. Third down play here. Wilson to throw. Wilson may be able to run. Now back. Flag is down. Wilson trying to get ahead. And down he goes with a lot of students. But the flag went down very quickly at the 46-yard line. And let's see what this one is. Got to feel this one uh, against the Cougars. If it is, it means that Houston will punt the ball away. They have been busy flipping tonight, called against Houston. Joe Thomas and company have dropped that flag more than a few times. Now the decision comes. The yardage, the down. What are my options, Mr. Referee? Give the Cougars one more snap to, or force them to kick the football away because it's going to be third and long and they've got to kick it away. Are they going to refuse the penalty you saw? And they've refused the uh, penalties. We watched the block here on Sims right in the middle of your screen going down. That was a reach block that was effective. They refused the penalty in order to gain immediate possession of the football. Lonnie Strokes wants a punt here. He doesn't want to reach the end zone, but he'd like to get a punt and back Texas up in this first minute of the fourth quarter. He said he's been out punted tonight by Goodson. Gets the ball away, and that's going to go toward the end zone, and perhaps in the end zone, and it does. And we'll come out with a 20-yard line. So whatever he kicked it, just take 20 yards off the net. And the net is only 24 yards. 14 minutes to go. The Cougars of Houston leading the Longhorns of Texas, 14 to 3. There's a fine white wine that's great with America's favorite food. Crisp, light, delightfully dry. Its European charm goes with seafood and sausalito or Texas beef. New Orleans Creole or Southern Fried. Blue Nun, the delicious imported premium white wine. Blue Nun goes the Cotton Bowl at stake. Texas comes out of the huddle first down on its own 20-yard line. Brewer throws the football and has for the first time Donnie Little to make the catch and Little has got to say at last they got the football to me. I've been open quite a bit. 
has been open every time he's run that pattern. It's the running fake to the same side where Little is running the pattern. That means that the linebackers have got to come up to force the run. If Little can execute the down, force the corner man back, and then break it to the sidelines, he's open. He has been open all evening. That's the first time they've laid the ball on him. First down from the 34-yard line. Walls now to the right, and Little goes to the left. Brewer hands to his tailback, and Dan Jones picks up good yard at seven or eight yards before Lockhart makes the stop. Funny thing, we have not seen Butch McGuire in that ball game for this is the second half. It has been Durham on that corner. And once again, the two linebackers make good plays, but the line of Texas blocked well, and a pass completed does something to the rushing defense. Second down, short yardage, only two from the 41-yard line of Texas. And Brewer's going to use the second and two, and the ball is thrown and is complete. First down. Looks like Turkey Walls behind that wall of players, and it is. The junior out of Garden, Texas. First down for the Longhorns, and they're on the move. The same pattern that Donnie Little caught a moment ago. Roll out, get the linebacker to come up. Square out pattern by the wide receiver. He's in front of the corner man to make the reception. Rick McIver started this game. Robert Bush come on. The report is that McIver has got a shoulder injury. From the 49-yard line. Brewer sprinting out. Looking, throwing, and there's that man again. On the down and out again. Johnny Little and first down again. Inside the 40-yard line. Lockhart and Turner made the tackle. When you got something going, the old saying is stay with it until they prove to you they can stop it. And this is the third time in a row they've hit the same pattern. This one, he's moving to his left. Johnny Little runs an out pattern. Wide open. Tries to juke the corner man. Require, but is unable to do so. Cloney comes in. Walls comes out as the band of Texas looks on. Ball on the 35-yard line. Brewer going on nearly every play. Now stop and go to Donnie Little and he overthrew him. This time, it looked as though Buddy gave him the same look at the down and out, paused for a moment, and then took off downfield. You expect that uh, the corner man is going to get just a little bit over anxious when you hit in front of me all the time, and that it's going to get me to come up to try to play it. And you can see that uh, that's exactly what happened, as Little was able to break behind him, but the safety man came over who was backing him up in love and was in position on the long ball. All on a 35-yard line, second down, 12-48 left of the game, 14-3, to Houston over Texas. But Texas on the move. Brewer passing on nearly every play, has a lot of people out there. Ball is almost intercepted. Wall says he was knocked down, they say no. He ran into Grady Turner. Turner did not put him down, Walls ran into him. And Brewer certainly was uh, excited about it. You can see Buddy Akers waving his hand from the sidelines also. And now it is third down and ten. Everybody's entitled to their position on the field. Uh, there was nothing wrong with that defensive play at all. Let's take a look again here. Brewer dropping straight back this time instead of rolling it out. Here's the pass over the middle. And the linebacker's reaching for it. The receiver's reaching for it. Both men going for the ball. I has been called, and it's the official who is coming over to talk to the Texas bench. Akers is, I believe, calling him over, or else Joe Thomas wants to go over and talk to him. Freddie is asking for an interpretation, and he's entitled to do so. Joe Thomas is the referee. All inside the 30-yard line, and we've got a little hold in the action, as they say here, and... Houston, Texas, a lot of stakes. The man in your picture there is the man who said this is the biggest game of the Southwest Conference this year. I don't know if it's the biggest, but it's the most exciting game I've seen in some time. But Houston out in front 14 to three, and Texas driving with a third down and 10 to go. And it's taking itself down into uh, which team is gonna go to the Cotton Bowl, which uh, makes 30 acres correct when he says this is the most important game, because at this point in the season, it is. Well, whatever has happened, has happened. And the timeout is charged to Texas. And that is because the referee did not agree with Freddie Aker's discussion. Oh, well, they'll take a timeout away from Texas, which could be costly in the final moments of the game. Well, 42 left in the game, and 
The Cougars, remember, have scored only after two interceptions deep in Texas territory. Interception thrown by the now departed Rick McIver, who has a shoulder injury. And Robert Brewer, the man in your picture now, has taken over. He'd only thrown the ball 17 times before tonight's game. And this is the eighth game of the season. So he's seen very little action. But he has been quick. He had not gained a single yard running the ball before tonight. He had lost eight yards. And now he's on the plus side. You have Donnie Little coming in. He'll carry the play from Fred Akers. Do you think it would be a down and out? That's the most successful thing they've done so far, but they're going to roll the defense to have somebody in front and somebody behind fairly soon against that pattern. All right, time is in. Ball on the 35-yard line. The Texas man and Georgia's team. To come on, let's go. Big down, third and ten. Little comes to the right. Turkey Wall goes to the left. The backs are split. The fans again on their feet. Brewer straight back. Brewer in trouble. Gets the ball away for Orr, his fullback, who makes a good move. And Orr is shy of the first down. Fourth down inside the 30-yard line. Brewer. Terry Orr almost pulled it off. Brewer's got a lot of poise. He hasn't played very much. He was rushed. No one was open. Uh, he moved it to the outside. Uh, Orr was just a safety valve receiver, but he found him, hit him, and he's got a fourth down now and about four yards to go. Watch the poise of this young man. Nobody open downfield. Moving to the outside. Scramble. See the safety valve receiver and Orr. And Orr reverses the field. He's got everybody going the wrong way. It looked for a moment like he might make the first down. But Houston recovers well in the secondary. Darrell Clark has come on the field as there's a man injured on the field. Clark is a running back for the University of Texas. And it is a Texas man who is down. With 12 minutes and 14 seconds to go. And Brewer has his instructions. And it's coming out onto the field. And Freddie Akers has decided that uh, they need to make the first down more than they need the three points. All right, bud, it is fourth down. The scoreboard says five. I don't believe that. I think it's less than five as Orr is coming off. And Darrell Clark, number 33, will replace him at fullback. Remember Carl Robinson? Four and a half yards per carry. Led the club in catches. was suspended. Fourth down at about four yards to go from the 30-yard line. They almost jumped off side. Right to go down. They give him the first down. And Brewer wisely throws the ball away. And another flag goes down as Callaway might have roughed up the passer. Or it could be intentionally grounding the ball. Let us see what happens. I would think it would be that. I can't really feel any roughing on the play, but you never know what goes through the official's mind. Offsetting penalties here. It looks like Houston was offside. And looked like Brewer threw the ball away. Well, Houston was offside, and Brewer did throw the ball away. So again, it's fourth down and nearly five to go. Well, that's a shaky one, Jim. <laughs> and the defensive lineman jumped offside. It's uh, easy to see why you're over anxious. That's the most important snap of the game. I think it's Monroe over there that jumps just a little bit ahead. He tried to get back, but he'd made contact. The ball is snapped. Brewer dropping back. Trying to roll it to the outside. He gets pressured and he throws the ball away there. If you follow the flight of the ball here, you'll see that there isn't a Texas man anywhere around it. So it was an obvious intentional ground. All right, fourth down and four and a half to go again. Brewer on the option. Pitches it back. First down. And there goes the back. Walker. First and goal to go. John Walker. The sophomore from Killeen, Texas. And the Longhorns with 11.51 to go are back in business. Beautiful execution of the option by Brewer. As we mentioned earlier, uh, McIver has not run the option. Uh, Houston has not practiced against it this week, and it's difficult to adjust your defense to a play that you haven't worked against for a particular game. Let's take a look at it again. You can see the perfect pitch, the lead, and the great block on Durham. Smart move down the sidelines, and it's first down on the seven. A power eye formation now. Brewer hands the ball to Orr, and he's dragged down from behind by Terry Monroe, number 99. That's one good play for the defense. The second down and goal to go for the offense. A little surprised to see him go to that formation. Uh, I think they need to stretch the 
Houston defensive team rather than let them concentrate when they're back as far as the seven or eight yard line. They're now on about the eight and a half. Brewer seems a little confused, but he yelled over to the bench. He's got 10 seconds to get the playoff. He'll get it off in a hurry. And it's the same power eye formation. And now they put a man in motion. And here's the pitch back. And that is Walker touchdown. What a run. And do they have a hole for him? Eight-yard touchdown run. John Walker, the sophomore out of Killeen, Texas. Hold on. Who's going to the Cotton Bowl? We don't know. And they're 11 minutes and six seconds to go. 14 to 9. Make Will it. they go for two to make it 14 11? And the field goal would tie it up? Apparently not. They think they've got enough time. Let's hang on. John Walker's a high jumper, and I want to tell you, he looked like he jumped high for that. They may go for the two. We have not seen a Laker come out yet. Make it 14 11, and of course, a tie, and the conference would benefit Texas greatly, and they're going for the two. In motion comes Roar. Here comes Roar. Roar throws, and it's caught. Walker again. The sophomore has all eight points. 14 11. When a team goes for two points, it's almost always the option to pass and run. That's what Texas uses here. Roar, a very cool operator, rolling out behind some excellent blocking. Finds Walker breaking to the outside. Walker makes the reception. Clearly in the end zone. Let's take a look at it from the end zone camera. Brewer rolling to the outside. Finding Walker moving to the outside and into the end zone for the two-point extra point. Man in motion. Johnny Little stretching the defense, taking the corner man out of the play. The pass to Walker is completed. And now the game is 14 to 11. It was 14 to nothing at the end of the half. It is now 14 to 11, and Tom Walker, the sophomore from Colleen, has done it all once they got the ball inside the 10-yard line. He is the hero of the hour. He has scored on an eight-yard run and caught the pass from Brewer for the two-point conversion. Jordan is the deep man. Allegra will kick it off. A lot of time left, but Houston will have to get something going. The momentum belongs to Longhorn. Jordan will not bring it out. Of course, it's Kenneth and Putty. And now let's go back to the moment to John Walker and his eight-yard run. Power eye formation, and it's simply a wipeout by the Texas blockers. You can see the halfback moving in motion. Great blocking downfield, a marvelous run. And Walker is not only a great football player, but anybody who's been high jump six feet eight is a great athlete. Watch him turn it on here as he sees that little bit of daylight and then up into the air and into the end zone. A little closer angle of it this time. Coming right at you, and he goes up into the air and into the end zone. Wilson back to throw, has seen an under closing at the 45-yard line. And Wilson was under tremendous pressure by the Texas defense. Now Fred Akers and company might be excused if they think they've got something going. Second down at the 20-yard line. This is the time to be the number one defensive team in the country. It gives you a little bit of confidence that we can stop them when they've got 80 yards to go. The old Yeoman went to the pass. Now Felder comes out wide to the left. And T is also on the left side. Both wide receivers to the left on second down. Wilson carries the football. Wilson runs by one man and gets out there to the 25-yard line. Scramble for the ball, and I believe Houston holds on at the 25-yard line. Then it'll be third down and about five to go. Pfeiffer made sure that the ball was kept in Houston's hands. And now the play has come in, and the person of David Overson will tell Wilson what to do. As Bill Yeoman, with ten and a half minutes to go, calls his third down and five play. Roberson wide to the left. Wilson flag down, gets the ball away, caught across the way, first down fee. Another first down pass, but remember, a flag is down at the 25. And the question, is it against Texas or is it against Houston? And they're talking to Texas, so it is against Houston. Now, 
The Cougars began to make the critical errors to draw the penalty that stopped the drive. Instead of a first down, it's going to be third down and ten to go. Very difficult uh, defensive play here. I mean, great rush. Of course, Wilson he got the ball away well, but someone has moved before the snap. Bill Yeoman has not yet set on the play on third down and ten to go. Signaling from the sideline, and the official said, okay. Go. Wilson looks to the sideline. Robers have not yet come in. Now Felder will come in with 15 seconds to go on the play clock. 10 seconds to go. Took a long time sending it in. Five, four, three. He got it off. Wilson under pressure. Has a man there intercepted by number two, Mike Hatchett. Texas is back up the football at the 36 at Houston. Once again, Wilson lost his poise a little bit. He was pressured through downfield. The receiver was beautifully covered. Absolutely no chance. Not a good play. That's the fake, the pressure. Wilson pops it downfield. Texas defender moves across the front of the play. Hatchet making a very simple reception. And it's a very bad throw. And 12 to go in the game. Texas has got the football. They trail by three at the 36-yard line of Houston. Little comes out wide to the right. Herky Wall goes to the left. A little in motion. Brewer going back to throw. Goes deep. And it may be intercepted, but it's not. Two Houston men there, and Bud, Herky Walls, and Donnie Little, I'm not sure were sure of the patterns they were running. They were kind of together and looking at one another as the ball flew over their head. There were three of them uh, in the same area, and that is not a good pass pattern. Bonner and Easton were back there. Both had a chance to intercept, but I guess they were glad to see the ball sail past them. I think that Brewer saw that there was nobody really open and threw the ball away. We're almost in Allegra's field goal range, however. One first down, and we'd have a tie ball game if, even if Houston is able to stop them from making a touchdown. Second down and 10. Brewer rolling out. Brewer, look out! He gets the ball away behind Walker, the intended receiver at the 33-yard line. Greg Harmon was pressuring Robert Brewer, and it is third down and 10. Big opportunity for Texas, but now it is third and 10. And the pursuit of the... Houston team here is beginning to take a little bit of effect. They're moving to the outside. They get a little bit of a hand on Brewer here just before he throws the ball. But there is a receiver in the area, so it was not intentional grounding. Nine minutes, 58 seconds to go. 14 to 11, Houston. The Cougars did not score in the second half. Texas did not score in the first half. Texas, three and one in the conference. And Houston, three and two in the conference. Brewer under pressure. Ball is knocked up in the air. It's not near John Walker. It is fourth down. And now, will it be a moment of decision? No. Out comes Allegra. They're going to let him try one from 50-some yards away. I guess he's got leg enough, Jim, but he better hit it very accurately. Allegra has missed at 50 and 54 yards and has not hit one as long as 50. Well, he has one against SMU of 52. This will be 53 yards away. And the ball is up 53 yards away. No, it is so good. And Houston holds on. 9.46 to go. It's not over yet. Houston 14 and Texas 11. for all the guys who keep the action from getting out of hand. Yeah, just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. This Bud, for you. The ball on the 37-yard line for the Cougars. They'll try to get something going as David Barrett carries for a yard or two. That was a great defensive series for Houston. 
They turned the ball over on their own 36-yard line with the interception. Texas was unable to make anything on three passes and then missed the field goal, so no points on the board. Second down and eight. Out comes the linebacker Lighting. In comes the fifth defensive back, Greg Curry, expecting Bill Yeoman to tell Lionel Wilson to throw the football. Second down, handoff inside, lost the football. And I believe that Robert Durham got it right back. The ball bounced down, and on this Astro turf, it bounced right back into his arms as he was going down. If you're a Houston fan, you call that an honest bounce. The outside option run this time. Durham breaks it back inside. You can see the ball bounce and bounce right back up to him. Third down and eight. And now Roberson and Fee are both to the left side. Everybody anticipating Wilson to throw. Instead, he hands off to Fee. Fee steps out. He does not have a first down, and there is a flag down at the 37-yard line. Fee is about a yard short, and there's a flag down in Houston territory. And let us see what happens here. And it is offside, Texas. So they'll get another shot. It'll be third down and three if they choose to take the penalty. They'll and have I'm to sure choose. they will, because otherwise it'll be fourth down and one. Yeah, and you don't want that uh, with the score as it is and in your field position. Well, I tell you, I don't know who the Vitalis most valuable player is, and I think we're going to hold on to that. Maybe the official. <laughs> I think Fred Akers might vote them to that right now. Offside as Texas continues to make mistake after mistake. Houston has been caught up in the activity also lately of being penalized. Ball on the 44-yard line. Third down and a short three to go. The time on the clock is important here if they can make the first down. Eight and a half minutes left at the moment. Wilson turns it up, has the first down. Wilson downfield inside the 40. First down, Houston. And that's the big play of the second half for Houston. No question about it. The option sooner or later will find a little bit of daylight if you've got skilled athletes running it. There's the inside fake, the good block. Wilson turns it up, finds just a little bit of a seam. But the good athlete can make the great play. Looks like he's got it all the way. Bedford makes the tackle. First down, 38-yard line. As you look at Wilson, we watch wide receivers right and left. Wilson calling signals. Wilson handing off inside to Barrett, and Barrett gets down to the 35-yard line. Second down, and about seven to go, John Haynes makes the stop. Less than eight minutes to go now. Wilson has passed for 66 yards and rushed for 47 himself. Five to 11 is passing the run. Time that is coming off the clock as well as that first down that is the crucial thing for the University of Texas as well as Houston. Both fans are playing. Houston on the far side, Texas on the near side. Flag down as Houston has too many moving men moving at the same time. Not so okay in the Canadian Football League, but doesn't work in the NCAA. Well, it's a little hard to hear the starting counts. You mentioned about both bands, Jim, and uh, with all of the noise in an enclosed arena. It just echoes, re-echoes, reverberates, and you can't hear the snap count too well. 14-11, Houston, seven and a half minutes to go. Dealing is, and of course, they still have to play teams down the road. Whoever wins tonight will go to the Cotton Bowl. Texas has down the road, Texas Christian Baylor, and at Texas A&M. Whereas Houston has down the road, Texas and at Rice only. Two more games, five yards marked off. And caught up second down and 12 to go. And Sims has just come off the field limping a little. Looks as though he had an ankle stung. It doesn't appear to be much of an injury, but he's going to miss a play or two. Less than seven and a half minutes left. Ball is just on the Houston side of the Texas 40. Roberson to the right and Fee, who has had a great night, to the left. Wilson looking as a man over there and it is scored. Not able to hold onto the ball for the third time tonight. That was a little bit more difficult for Mark Ford, but that's the third time that Wilson's got him the football and he hasn't been able to hang on. Looks to me as though he made his break a little bit deeper than the pattern was really designed. The outside wide receiver had taken the corner man back. He's supposed to break in front of it, but he was within about four or five yards, and uh, normally you want about 10 yards between those two receivers. Now comes the big play for Houston. Third down and 12 to go. Felder left, Steve. 
split left. And Wilson holding onto the football. Same play again. Wilson has the first down. Unbelievable. Down to the 26 yard line. And a Texas man is down. That's what happens when you've got the blitz on and the quarterback finds some daylight. Texas is playing pass all the way. Here they come. All the linebackers, everybody. Straight block by the halfback faking to the inside. There's not anybody there to play the quarterback on the option. Wilson reads it beautifully. First down. Less than seven minutes to go now. Roberson brings on the play to Lionel Wilson. This is the first drive that the Cougars have had in the entire second half. And what a time to have it. First down inside the 30-yard line. And straight ahead goes Barrett, the fullback, down to about the 25-yard line. And now you begin to think of Mike Clendenin, who happens to be an outstanding freshman field goal kicker for Houston, should they not get the touchdown. They could force Texas to have to go for a touchdown, should they score. And less than six and a half minutes to go. And Sims has just re-entered the game for the University of Texas. Second down, eight from the 25. Elder this time wide right, T wide left. Wilson hands off and straight ahead goes Durham. And he fumbled the ball and Texas got it. Jeff Lighting, who had five sacks last week, comes up with the football. And just like that, the Longhorns have a shot. You'd think that Houston would at least come away with three, but they fumble the football. Inside handoff to... Uh... He should not fumble this ball. Durham has it. He's trying a little bit uh, too hard to run. And he just bounced the ball off. You've got a feeling you can run a handoff anytime you choose to. But uh, there goes the ball, and it's picked up by Lightning. Ball is on the Texas 23. They've got a long way to go. Quick pitch back. And this is Walker. who has been having a great, great night since coming on in the fourth quarter. Harris and McDonald made the stop and will keep an eye on the clock for you. 545 and counting. And Houston needs to stop this Texas drive and then the clock will be very much on their side if they can. Second down and six. Donnie Little to the left. Herky Walls to the right. And Brewer straight back to throw. Has time. Gets the ball away to Walker. Walker being pursued across the field. And down he goes on a saving tackle by Weedy Harris. But it's a first down, the University of Texas. The ball out at the 35-yard line. Let's watch number 99 here. See him on the left side of the screen being held. The man doing that is Sharon. You can use your hands, though, more this year in college football than ever before. It's not as liberal as the pro rule, but you can have your hands away from your body as long as they're inside the periphery of your body itself, your chest. Ball on a 37-yard line. Brewer on first down, back to throw. Delivers to Donald Little. He's got the football first down inside the 45 and between five Houston defenders. They simply didn't seem to watch the ball be delivered. They were in good position. Walls came across on a pattern through the middle, post pattern, crossing. The uh, Houston men just did not move the ball after it was in the air. You can see all of them around it, but no one really closing on it. Ball on the 44-yard line. Brewer's 8 of 18 for 93 yards. And he's got the long one fooling for a 23 after sliding recovered a fumble by Houston. Brewer. Holds the football himself and gets inside the 40-yard line. And Harmon makes the stop there. And Brewer looks like a very confident young man at quarterback, whether throwing or running the ball. Very quite quick. a shot there. Very quick. And I think that uh, the adjustment that uh, Houston made against the option to make him run with the ball is better than letting him pitch it. Second down, five to go from the 39-yard line. 14-11, Houston, the Cotton Bowl at stake. And there goes the tailback, and this time Walker does not get too much. A.J. Jan Jones has not been in since Walker got that eight-yard touchdown run and then caught the two-point conversion. And now Terry Orr takes himself out of the lineup, limping a little bit at fullback. A big third down four. Third and four. 
Darrell Clark becomes a fullback. Johnny Walker looks like he's got face in front of him. And I believe he's got the first down. It all depends on where they mark the ball inside the 35-yard line. Weedy Harris knocked him out across the way. Donnie Little is being helped up. They have not yet moved the stake. And I don't know if they're going to. I don't believe so, Jim. They got about a foot or two to go. At the 35-yard line, A.J. Jam Jones comes in. John Walker comes out. Jones has the word for Robert Boyd. It is fourth down, and we have a timeout called, I believe, by Houston. Uh, the key play here. They've got to try to stop it if they can. 3.49 left. Can't ask for much better football game in this. The Cotton Bowl at stake. Houston, 14 points in the first half. Texas, 11 in the second. And the Longhorns on the move. Last cold contact. This cold Comtrex. I switched because Comtrex relieves my aches, pains, and fever. Contact doesn't. Last cold Tylenol. This cold Comtrex. I switched because Comtrex has the same aspirin-free pain reliever, plus it relieves my cough. You could take any of these for a cold, but for one with nasal congestion, runny nose, aches, and coughs, Comtrex multi-symptom cold reliever does more. All by itself, Comtrex gives more kinds of relief than Dristan or Contact or Tylenol. Next cold, try Comtrex. It does more. All right. That's a brewer at the moment. We not only do not know who's going to win this football game, we don't even know whom our most valuable player is. So just stand by and the Vitalis most valuable player will be named after this sun moves down and the ball game is over. Right now, it could be Brewer, couldn't it? It could be Lionel Wilson, couldn't it? It could be Fee, who has made some remarkable catches. We don't know. Let's just hang in there. Fourth and one, everybody to their feet. Power on. Diving for the first down is A.J. Jam Jones. Down to the 32. Jones took off like a jet. First down, Texas. 3.46 left. And remember, for Texas, a field goal will be just as good. It would keep them undefeated with one defeat in the conference. That's right. They've got that one-game lead on Houston. Very fine drive that time by Jones. Straight ahead and high in the air to make the first down. First down from the 32. Houston turned it over on the 23 of Texas. And here comes the tailback again. Jan Jones down to the 30, second down and eight. Check that. That is Walker who came back in after the dive of Jam Jones. Weedy Harris and Alvin Rubin made the tackle. 3 11 left in the game. And second down and eight. Houston had uh, no turnovers in the first half. They turned it over three times this half. The difference in how the game has gone in each half. Turkey Walls wide left. Donnie Little to the right. Brewer dropping straight back. Looking for Little. Down the field and no good. What a play off the right hand of Donnie Little and right with him was Durham. The man filling in for the choir. Beautiful play by Durham. He was not in very good position, but he made a great move to the ball. Donnie Little has got great speed. Gerald throws up. Brewer. The ball is in the air. And Durham comes across, gets a hand on the ball to knock it away from Little. One more time. Brewer dropping back. Good protection. A lot of time. Ball in the air. Appears that Little is open. But Durham gets a hand on the ball to block the pass. Ball on the 30-yard line. Third down and eight. And Brewer back again. Brewer looking again, and it is no good. Sampleton was the man who were after double coverage. Love was there along with Durham. Donnie Love, number 48, and he gets the plotted. It is fourth down and eight, and now the big decision, and out comes Allegra. Watch the pass again. Brewer throwing the ball to Sampleton. And again, the great defensive play of Houston. All right, Durham and Love. But from 47 yards out, this could tie the game and could mean the Cotton Bowl for Texas if they make it. 47 yards out, the kick is up, and it is good! So 
difficult. We talk about turnovers. We watch Allegra hit the ball again, and he hit it extremely solidly. He knew that this one was right there. He's watching it all the way, and then he sees that it is in there, and okay, man, we finally made one. But remember this. Houston was driving for at least a field goal, if not a touchdown, when they fumbled on a 23. And instead, they did fumble, and Brewer brought them back, and Allegra kicked the 47-yard field goal. It is 14 all. Ty doesn't do Houston much good at all. Does Texas a lot of good in the Southwest Conference race. 14-14 to 40 to go, and I would imagine Bill Yeoman will pull up all the stops. The last two times that Houston has had the ball, they've stopped themselves with turnovers. Oh, now, going deep is Jordan, standing in his own end zone. Nobody else flanked on either side of him. The other 10 men are within 20 yards of one another. I don't believe Texas will try any onside kicks. They got a 14-14 tie, and that's good. Houston's thinking they might. Allegra to kick off. And he does kick it high and short. So Jordan will have a chance from the six yard line. 15 jammed up there. Tries to get outside. Good coverage by Texas. Gets to about the 18. And it's first down with 2.34 to go. Now let us see what Houston does. Some kind of play action or rollout. All points scored by Houston first half. All points scored by Texas second half. Capacity crowd, and I don't think anybody stopped yelling since the game began. And I hardly think the bands have stopped playing since the game began. Ida Wilson. Wilson pitches back. And here comes Alan Polk. And a flag goes down after Polk goes down. Now, if that's against Texas, they really got to be upset because they held Polk for just a couple of yards. It's not, Jim. It is going to be clipping, and it's going to put Houston back in the hole. That is if they choose to accept the yardage or the down. I would assume, being a clipping penalty, they'll take the yardage. Uh, almost have to. They're marking off the yardage. Flags have been flying tonight, and I don't mean the Texas State flag either. <laughs> I mean the yellow flag of Texas. There's one for you, the yellow flag of Texas. And you've got it. That's what the officials dropped. Mm. Pitch back is very accurate. And right there you see the clip. Blocking from behind. Ball back on the 10-yard line. First down and 18 to go. Stanley Wilson and the Cougars need something. Wilson rolling out. Wilson has a man almost intercepted. Intended for fee. And almost intercepted by the Longhorn. Number 41, Vance Setford, who's played an outstanding game tonight. That kind of would have wrapped it up for at least a time. Well, he made a very fine move, Setford, in front of the ball. The receiver looked so open that Wilson didn't really pop it in there with any authority. Setford came across in front of it and almost made the interception. Another angle, you can see him coming. The ball hangs in the air just a little bit too long. Second down. C to the left. Roberson to the right. And the Cougars hanging on. They want to win. Wilson throws. Has his man C. Knocked down across the 15-yard line. It'll be third down and short yardage to go. Craig Curry, number five, really put a hit on Lanell Fee. They'll mark it at the 17-yard line. They've got to get across the 19 for the first down. Fee is not very big, but he's certainly quick and fast and dangerous. And the crossing pattern, the pass was behind him, but he reached back and made a fine catch. Well, they've got me. They've got to get across the 29, of course, not the 19. Now they're back near their original line of scrimmage. Third down and a long way to go. And I think we're going to get another time out by Houston. Leon Feller ran off the sidelines, went to one of the officials and called timeout. One minute, 29 seconds to go. Well, you know, but I wonder how much can you gamble? We're saying that Texas by winning will be on its way to the gospel. That is that they win all the rest of the game. And down right. the line of Texas a &M. Same thing for Houston. So you want to win if you're Houston to get that extra game in the lost column for Texas. But 
still, you don't want to play around so much if you're liable to get an extra game in the lost column, and then Texas stumble, and you're still out of it. So, give a trick in between. And the odds are against the number one defensive team in the country that you're not going to move it to 20 from your own 20-yard line uh, where they started on this one before the clipping penalty, uh, 80 yards to put something on the board, even though they got close enough to the field goal. However, I think that Houston will make some kind of an effort to, to move the ball well and, and hopefully move into field goal range. All right, it is 14-all. One minute, 29 seconds to go. The ball on the 17-yard line of Houston, third down, and 12 to go. They've got to get the ball out to the 29-yard line. Everybody in the stadium stands up. Wide receivers right and left. They're after Wilson, trying to evade the rush. Wilson on his way. Stop, goes. Still on his way across the 30. First down. Stop the football. Let's see who got it. Wilson made a great play across the 35-yard line, dropped the football, and let us see who got it. Houston is saying they've got it, but the official has not told us yet. And apparently Houston does have it. He's got great speed, Jim. There was just no way he could turn that corner. He looked like uh, Herschel Walker or some other fast, fast running back. What's the angles they've got on him? He simply outruns them all. Then breaks after looking one more down field to see if he can throw the ball. Almost popped it clean. Watch his feet again as he gets to the outside. He hesitates here after he knows he's got the corner turn, looking for a receiver. Then bingo, he turns it on again. And he picks up the first down. I tell you what, Lionel Wilson is shaken up, but he was limping. And they may call timeout here. They may have to because he went back not knowing where he was. And, and he's limping a little bit. Last that's timeout. Houston's out of timeout. He really took a pop as he got there. And so he calls timeout with 103 to go. First down. Uh, this is a terrible time to lose your quarterback. Oh, my. Well, I don't think that he's able to go. I don't think he can take it off fast enough. I don't think he's badly hurt. But it's going to take a little bit of time, and there's only one minute and three seconds remaining. Now what does Bill Yeoman do? He sent in Jerry Dickens, who was a sophomore, who's thrown the ball twice all year and has not run the ball. McIver out for Texas, did not play at all on the second half. The report was on him after he had a terrible first half, that he had a bad shoulder, a shoulder injury. And Lionel Wilson might have been in the line and might still be in the line as the most valuable player who knows but he's not going to get a chance to really steal it because he goes off hurt and jerry dickens comes on 49 seconds left i guess dickens is there to do one thing roll out and throw he throws and the ball is knocked away intended across the way for roberson and knocked away by number 41 bedford who has had an outstanding night Almost intercepted the last two passes thrown on the flat by Houston quarterback. He's taking the uh, inside, in front cover because he knows he's getting a roll to his side when the quarterback starts his way. This is at the top of the screen. The rollout pattern gets the roll up by the corner. He can safely go up on this one because he knows that he's covered from behind. Bedford does make a good play to knock the ball away. Second down 10, Lionel Wilson is back at quarterback. 42 seconds left, 14 all. Wilson hands off and up the middle. Down the sideline goes Barrett. Out of bounds, stopping the clock. 36 seconds to go. And the freshman Mike Clendenin must be wondering, am I going to get a chance to win it with a field goal attempt? 36 seconds left. 14 all. Wish they had that other timeout right now. They wish that uh, Wilson had not been shaken up and they had to waste the timeout. Beautiful quick pop that nobody expected. A little cut back and... A lot of daylight moving down the sideline. Finally caught, but he's almost in field goal range. There's Clinton and the freshman out of Weatherford, Texas. He may get a shot. Right now, it's beyond a lot of folks' range. It would be a 60-yard field goal. 36 seconds to go. No timeouts left. Texas can be happy with a tie in that it's not another loss in their conference standings. But Houston, They're down they five, need a four win. Seconds. Got it off. Wilson, look out, Wilson, lost the football, belongs to Houston with 26 seconds to go as Billy Kidd steps on the ball, the clock will continue to run, Houston cannot call timeout, 
but the officials do to get everybody back on side with 20 seconds to go in this 14-14 tie. They changed their minds and they had zero timeout left on the board for Houston, but uh, suddenly they sprung up that they had one more timeout remaining, which they have just used. Well, the scoreboard clock operator, like the rest of us, as we watch Lionel Wilson is human, and apparently he made a mistake. That ball and has bounced has around it? a little bit, and fortunately, Houston's on it, but uh, 20 seconds remaining, the ball at midfield, no timeout remaining. You've got to get some kind of a pass. You've got to get the ball out of bounds. SMU and the Southwest Conference is 5-1, and one, but ineligible for the Cotton Bowl. Texas is 3-1. and one. If this holds up, they'd be 3-1-1, one and, one, and Houston would be 3-2-1. And, and for Houston, they would have to hope that Texas stumbles down the road somewhere. Remember, Texas has not been in the Cotton Bowl since 1978. Houston has been there twice since and would like to go again. The big play, the fumble at the 23-yard line by Barrett that allowed Texas to move down, kick the 47-yard field goal. And you've got to watch P on this one. He's the speed merchant. Dallas Wiggins has come in. Wilson puts the ball over the center of the line to nobody. And the only man near there was Mark Ford, the tight end. Ball was tipped. I don't know who. Live down, tipped. Bud, in the backfield, and they're pointing toward Houston, I believe. Maybe a holding call here. 16 seconds to go. And I would imagine that yardage is the primary factor, not down, because there's so little time left. They should take them. The extra yardage here, as you pointed out, it's only five yards. For Holding. Charged against Houston. 16 seconds to go. 14 off. Hey, what a game in the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. Have we enjoyed this? Wilson has to throw the football. on by number 90 John Haynes the tackle eight seconds left and Texas calls the timeout which I cannot understand well I the only thing I can think is maybe they hope they'll put it up in the air and they'll intercept it something I don't know why I would not give him another shot with the ball I wouldn't either Wilson sets and then from the blind side boom but he's able to hang on to the football and not fumble well it's been often said but and I don't know how much you coaches work on razzle-dazzle trick plays, but how many announcers have said if Bill Yeoman has something in his bag of tricks, now is the time to pull it out at 14 all in a game that could mean the Cotton Bowl for both teams. Well, you know that uh, he's not going to run any kind of a double reverse handoff because the secondary is going to be dropping back playing nothing but pass. The only thing that uh, you can have happen to you that might turn the tide for Houston is a, a great throw and a great pattern run by a very fast receiver like Fee. And who can break it all away. They can't throw it all away. Whoever catches it has to be behind somebody to be able to pick their way through the broken field. Time for perhaps two more plays, and two more plays are all they've got on the scoreboard at the time. Eight seconds to go, third down and 28. The ball on the 39-yard line of Houston. It is 14 all. Some what? kind of a deep crossing pattern. That's what I believe they'll try to throw. Felder is wide to the right. C is wide to the left. And Wilson is back to throw. Not a deep drop, and down he goes. And that may be it. Three, two, one. Ball game, according to the scoreboard clock, is over. It is a tie at 14 all. Texas does not go down with a defeat. They are three, one, and one in the conference. They still have the lead for the Cotton Bowl. Whereas Houston, they are three, two, and one, and still a game down in the loss column to Texas. And let us figure out our most valuable player of the game. And it has to be the quarterback who came out after the strains of the eyes of Texas. We tell you it is Robert Brewer, the junior out of Richardson, who took off for Rick McIver and has the crowd singing. It's a tie, but they know for them they've got a great chance, the Longhorns do, for the Cotton Bowl. Bill Yeoman's team did an outstanding job. The capacity crowd hardly ever sat down and never shut up. It was that kind of game. Turnovers gave 14 points to Houston in the first half. 
turnovers gave 14 points to Texas in the second half. What a football game.